God's Day, and welcome to back to my first special guest episode of my second year and my fifth season of Reese Being Refined by the Fires. I'm Ree, and today is my October show where I'm interviewing two more of my very good Christian friends, Bradley and Chantel Rose, as we talk about their lives to show that they are no in they are in no way perfect and also have their fair share of messes. But God has turned those messages, those messes into messages, their testimony, so they can share with you. So uh, soon you'll hear from them yourself. And I'd be, it'd be appreciated if you'd subscribe to my podcast, hit the like button. And if there's something you heard that you'd like to share with something else, someone else who would possibly benefit by being edutained, both educated and entertained, please do so. Thanks again for tuning in for another episode of my show, Reads Being Refined by the Fires. So here we go. So Chantel and Bradley, how are you guys really doing today? <laughs> um, doing pretty good, you know, just, uh, I guess, slowly winding down from the weekend, but you know, not really much going on, getting ready for the work week. Yep. All over again. Don't it come fast? It's like the weekend flies by, but the work week drags. Yes, the weekend feels like a fifteen-minute break. I know, right? <laughs> <sighs> and you, Bradley? Oh, uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm just a little bit tired. Uh, I, you know, had to. I did a dusty on my overnight shift and uh, took a little nap and woke up with cut the grass, did some yard work, and you know. I didn't finish that until about a couple hours ago, but, you know, we we here, you know? Yeah, and that's the best thing. You got to give God praise and thanks for always being here because somebody didn't wake up today. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we first met because both of our daughters, uh, M and ZM, take ballet together through NOBA. Correct, yeah. yeah. And, uh, So, but they've been taking uh, taking it together since they were little girls. I know Zahn started when she was six, and uh, we were spotlighted on uh, their website during uh, the Nutcracker because I was one of the grandmothers, casted as one of the grandmothers. And uh, how was Mila when she started? She was seven when she started. Okay, yeah, she started in second grade. Yeah. Okay. Zahn was in first grade. Yeah. Ain't like forever ago, but also I like know. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And she went into it. I guess it feels like she went into it with everything. Like she was so excited, you know. Mm -hmm. so we've been talking about it, I think, for a good bit, and you know, found out about Nova, and you know, went to one of the auditions, and she's been <laughs> running ever since. Really. Because well, we, we kind of we we it's really kind of just stumbled on it really. Right. Uh, yeah. My son was going to uh, our son. He was going to a high school that was down the street from you know one of the uh, Nord facilities. Mm -hmm. And we just so happened to pass by one of the signs, and you know, and of course, that signs here say free ballet lessons. Yeah. Year. And you know, at, at that time, she was, you know, she would she would kind of do you know some dance stuff around the house, whatever. And I mm -hmm. just kind of asked you know, hey, look, you know, you want to you want to go try you know some ballet classes and. Eyes lit up. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Like, okay, right, yeah, we'll, we'll try it out and see how you like it. <sighs> I think mean, she fell in love from the first day. Wow. You know? And ever since then, it was just, you know, that it, just, it, it, it is what it is. That, it's that, stuck. That she, she found her thing. Yeah. Right? And, and it's, we just, I just fell into it. Exactly. And that, that means so much when they find their thing. Because, oh, yeah. uh, you know, Zahn got held back. And she was so devastated when uh Ava and uh uh Elizabeth and uh mm, Mila moved up. She was uh -huh. devastated because all of them used to hang together. But uh oh, yeah. and then the next semester she tried again at the auditions and she still got held back until. But now baby girl is taking it serious. She yeah. she danced the skin <laughs> off of her feet. During the summer intensive this time, oh, so oh, she, she, she got that yes, 
she wow. earned her spot. Oh, yeah. She got that oh, hunger God. because she was just, I mean, it was like she was dancing, but even me and her dad had said she didn't seem like she was putting in as much effort as she liked to. I think she was just kind of, that's just like in school, we feel like, you know, she just coasting. She knows she's a good student and she was just relying, pretty much relying on that with the uh, dance, but you have to be intentional about being, you know, a good dancer. And she just wasn't, didn't seem, we didn't see the hunger in her for that. But she, this summer, oh yeah, she got real hungry. Her sister was starving. <laughs> well, the good thing is that the work ethic that she developed during those things can carry over to other stuff. Mm-hmm, exactly. You know, I grew up running track. I mean, I played other sports too, football, but track was always my thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the, the, the determination that you have, uh, that you build uh, in that. Yep, cares it, over. It shows you that, that you always got a little bit extra in the tank. Yep. Yeah. You know, and, and, and you know, if, if, you, if you're really in the sport like that, you mm -hmm. know, and, and there's, there's nothing really wrong. Sometimes they just want to hang out with their friends, you know, and, that, and that's cool. Too. Well, and that's what she was yeah. going there for. It was like, an activity to do with her friends. It was a hangout. And it's like, right. uh, no, ma'am, this is pre-professional. You're not just taking regular norts in a ballet no more. You're in the program to be a professional dancer. So you need to take this a little bit more seriously. And Alex thought I was wrong for talking to her like that, but it is what it is. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, you know, it, it's, it's, it's the environment. You know, if, if it's up to school related, like me, I always, well, I guess when I got older, I, I ran uh, summer track, and so that that's just a little bit different. But if it's attached to your school, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times, especially the track, you know, a lot of times it really just end up being a hangout kind of a deal. Yeah. You know, but if it is some extracurricular, you yeah. know, that's not attached to the school, yeah. you, know, you kind of do got to, you know, you got to put just a little bit more effort in, in, in that, you know. Yeah, well. And it, it's, it's, it's just so much that, that's involved with it. You know, you got to be at this place at this time, and all of that, and if, if they just kind of just line the gag and not not really, you know, putting in that effort, then yeah, you know, it's, because it's kinda, when she know, didn't make it the first trial, because she didn't, she has a bar, a ballet bar, a professional <laughs> ballet bar, right, yeah, in her room, and the night before her tryout, I said, "You're not gonna audition." She was, I mean, and practice, and she was like, uh, "I don't think I really need to," and it's like, "Are you sure?" No, I think I got it. So she went to the to the trial audition and bombed it. And when she found out that the other girls had made it, she was heartbroken. I'm like, son, you did it to yourself. How do you own a bar? Your daddy has bought you a bar right. to practice on. And you didn't take advantage of that. That was to give you an, uh, a head up on the other yeah. girls who don't have bars in their room. So, and, and truth be told, even that experience that 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 would probably mean just as much to her as if she got promoted in the first place. Oh, you know, I, that, you know what? Means. That has been the best thing by her being yeah. held back not not once but two times. That she, yeah. yeah, she's hungry for it now. She's serious. That she didn't give up though. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's good because at one up. time she was talking about. Well, she did run track. She ain't gonna be able to do it this semester because the track yeah. uh, yeah. meets. Are in March, and uh, their schedule's not gonna allow her to move. Uh, no. She can't miss no Saturday classes. No, no, no. And three of them in between March and April are gonna be on Saturdays. She can't afford to miss three Saturdays of ballet at this point. No. So well, even uh, you got to factor in the practice. You know, track practice. That's every day during the week. Yeah, yeah. Well, she, was, she would have to go to practice track practice and then come to ballet that's that's a lot that's yeah well she did last semester yeah she, and she was right. tired but uh, she she I'm was bad. she was <laughs> i was I'm like bad. girl take a nap, right? yes <laughs> then she have a lot of homework too on some days i was like lord but the good thing is they have like a days and b days so they don't take the same right. classes so she yeah. could kind of you know uh adjust her homework accordingly but uh-uh. No. She she realized it. Because I'm like, Zon, so you're not going to run track? She's not, Mom, I'm not going to have time. So I'm glad she realized that because uh, I would have, if she would have wanted to do it, I well, the thing is, and she used to be late 
getting her ballet classes because they was in uh the Bywater area at the Stalling right. Center. Well, now yeah. since she's in Orange, everything is at Lions or at Tulane, which are both right, right down the street from her school. So uh, yeah. she won't be late, but uh, mm mm. But yeah, I'd been knowing she's since she was since she started walking, she was a toe walker. <laughs> she would tiptoe and we dress her because for some reason tutu dresses were the style. Everything had tutu dresses yeah. with the little leggings underneath. So yeah. we, you yeah. know, dress her in that and she'd be out walking on her tiptoes. Everybody be like, oh, look at her. She's so cute. But and we had no idea. You know, it was like that was just a, a thing. It just happened to be the style when she was a right. little girl. And then it's like, look at her now. Who would have yeah. thought? Yeah. Some sometimes the things just you know it's just what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but no. So, uh, oh, and those who want to know, they have tracks with Nova. So you go from was it Releve or the Bridge? Bridge is the crossover, huh? Uh -huh. It's Releve, uh -huh. then Bridge. Yes. Then yes. Teal. Yes. Mm -hmm. blue, blue orange, orange and, purple. and purple so yeah they have tracks like in school you go from kindergarten first second third all the way through 12th grade in ballet with noba new orleans ballet association is tracks and you have releve bridge and bridge is like the crossover to teal and then it goes up from now and purple yeah. is the uh, top level so purple is when they graduate <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and you know, and I will say, you know, shout out to Nova because they they do they do tremendous work for these girls' self confidence, yes, and, and courage, yes. Um, just because I I remember uh, Mila's first you know real performance was at the Mahalia Jackson Theater, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that that was for their their fiftieth anniversary, mm -hmm. and it looked like the Met Gala in there. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I was more nervous. For me, because it's like you know, this is my 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 baby girl. Uh huh. So for all of these people. Yeah. You know, I I know I would have passed out. Yeah. And you know, afterwards, you know, I asked you like, like, are you okay? You know, you're kind of, kind of concerned. Mm -hmm. here, you know, like, like I hope this didn't traumatize my child. She's looking at me like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> like, I'm yeah. fine, Daddy. Chill out. I'm like, like you was all right in front of all the people. She's like, yeah, I really, I really didn't notice. Sure, you're better than me. They be in the zone. Yeah, yeah. They don't be looking at the audience. They try. They keeping their mind on what they supposed to be doing. Right. Yeah. And that, that's gonna carry them a, a long, a long way. Yeah. Well, even now with, with Mila, you know, we hardly ever have to tell her to do a schoolwork or go study. You know, uh huh. She, she's on. It. Yep. You that's know? like and, Zon. Yeah, and, and just just you know, she she understands. You know, if if I want to be somewhere. You know, if I want to do this thing, it's just some stuff that I just have to do. Mm -hmm. right? You know, if I want good grades, I, I have to study. That's, yep. that's just part of it. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, I, I love that for her because, you know, I've, I've never been one, even with, with, with our son, you know, I've never been one to, you know, oh, you have to make A's. Mm -hmm. because, you know, it's, Everybody's I, I'm, not I'm, an A student. Right. You know, my thing is, uh, did you try your hardest? Yep. You your know, best. Did, did you actually put forth the effort? You know, and, and and even if you didn't, why not? Yeah. You know, yep. I mean, did, did, did you I mean, did you legitimately have something else better to do? You know, <laughs> uh, you know, like, just, we try to be as, as reasonable as we can be. Mm -hmm. You know, because you know, well, and, and for, you know, they 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 like to change all kind of stuff in school now. A couple of years back with our son, it was what was it Common Core math? Yeah, Common Core. Yeah. I was like, well, you're still in uh, elementary school. Yeah, I, he had to teach me some some stuff with, with Common Core. That was, mm -hmm. that was that was something. It was hard for us to, to not go back into how we is. Oh man, look, one what? plus one is two. It was doing all kind of other stuff. Uh, uh, well, math has never been my strong point. So and and Alex was helping her, but now she's at the point where she's above where both of us. Well, it's like I barely yeah. made it out of out of algebra. I had to take that right. over. I took algebra one twice in high school, <laughs> and the second time, guess what? I cheated because I refused <laughs> to repeat it again. <laughs> okay, I, I, I don't advertise it too much, but I'm a firm believer: if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Uh uh. <laughs> If you can get away with it, especially with 
school, you know, is, is it cheating if you get caught? No. <laughs> <laughs> you were borrowing the answers. <laughs> right. Well, well, and, 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 well, I got some reservations about that, too, because when you get into the, into the workforce, you yeah. know, everything is about teamwork. Yeah. yeah. So why can't we all together as a team, we can learn these team building skills. Exactly. Well, together. Right. right. Yeah. And, you know, like you got to do everything individually. Yeah. In school, and, and to me, that's that's kind of wild. It's just even, even the grading skills. Like you know, I know in California they doing whatever they doing, but you know, even here, seventy five or, or seventy. If you do, if you got a list of things and you got seventy five percent of it done, that's a good day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But in school, that's what that's, that's, that's damn near a D. Yeah, that's that's kind of wild. <laughs> you know, if you get seventy five percent of your work done during the work day, that's a good day. Yeah. You know, yeah, you yeah. have. You know, but that that's you know that, that's, that's the grading scale. So speak. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so now let's go back and re- and reflect on you guys upbringing. Mm. Bradley, I've met I've had the pleasure of meeting both of you of both your mom, Miss Lisa, and what was your stepdad's name? Uh Jeff, Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Okay. For some reason, I had that written down. I'm like, no, his name ain't Jeffrey. <laughs> so I left it blank. I was supposed to ask you that before we started recording. Anyway, uh, okay, so uh, as we've seen them at, at Noba shows, uh, yeah. Mila's birthday parties, as well as the baking party your uh, mom had at their home in uh, New Orleans, yeah. down here in New Orleans. So, uh-huh. um, and they, are, they have another home that where they currently live in Baton Rouge, where your son just happens to go to LSU. Was yeah, that a coincidence yeah. or was that his choice? Uh, that was his choice. Um, when he was when he was getting out, uh, he was trying to choose between uh, ULL University of Louisiana. Okay. Because uh, so, you know, you know, I mean, you know, you graduate high school, you kind of want to go to school with some of your partners. Yeah. Uh, so some of his friends they ended up going to UL. Um, but uh, LSU came with a, with a nice offer. Uh, they they basically gave him uh, they pay all of his tuition, all of his fees, but they didn't give him anything for housing. Okay, which is fine because you know my my parents live in Baton Rouge. Yeah, uh, you know, so they had to go back and forth with the school just a little bit, uh, but but it all worked out, and okay. so he's staying with them. So he's essentially going to college for free. Which you know, I'm, I'm ecstatic about. This. Exactly, uh, free ninety nine. You can't get no better than no, that. No, no. <laughs> so yeah, so so he's he's he's, uh, he's down there with them. Uh, and, and truth be told, I'm I'm glad. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> I remember how how my college experience was being on my own. Mm-hmm. You know, that 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 true freedom. But you know, I, for him, you know, he, he got his grandparents there. I mean, they're, they're not really on him. You know, yeah. you know, they're not looking over his shoulder or whatever, but just, just their presence there mm-hmm. helps him stay on track. Yeah. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I really, really appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, and then, he, you know, he, he's the first grandchild, too. So, mm-hmm. that's, you know, he's the oldest and all that. So, you know, he, he's, he's good. You know, I, I, I just I remind him all the time, just, you know, stay focused, keep your head on straight. Because, yeah. you know, again, it's college. And, so, and, 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 and at LSU. So, you know. Is he on a... Uh... Does he play sports or is it an educational, uh, academic scholarship? It's an academic scholarship. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's well, wonderful. Yeah, well, I, you know, when I was young, you know, I, I guess, uh, well, of course, you know, in, in hindsight, everything is twenty twenty, right? Yeah. Uh, but when I was young, my thing, I was gung-ho for a track scholarship. Mm-hmm. And, and truth be told, I, I really do wish that I would have applied myself a little bit more in school to get an academic one, just... You know, playing sports in college, that that's that's the, you know, that's a job. Yeah. You got you got morning weights, then you gotta you have to be done with class by a certain time to yep. get to practice and yep. then you even got stuff in the off season. Yep. And then you know, God forbid if you got a away game, you know, it is it's, it really is a lot. And if you're a student, that's all you got you know, if you have an academic scholarship, that's all you gotta be as a student. Exactly. You don't, you don't really have no other stuff to do. I mean, you yep. don't have to go to class anyway. Yeah, you know, so that that's I'm, I'm glad. Um, in a way, and, and not not that he's not athletic. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just that you know, it, it's just, it's kind of funny when he was growing up. Um, well, not I guess when he was younger because he's still growing up. Mm-hmm. But, they are always be growing up, even when they get grown. Right. They still growing up. He he 
was the type of kid that uh, I'm, when, when I say he would be he would be goofing off. Mm-hmm. I mean, like for the first half of the year, mm-hmm. you know, and then the second half making A's. And it's like, how how you do that? <laughs> how, you, how you play around for the whole first half of the year? Exactly. And then and come back know, and like, okay, I'm going to get serious now and, and crank out all A's. And like, how you, like, so you just skip chapters one through five and go five through ten. Exactly. Like, I, I, I never, but that, that's, that's, that's just his thing. He doesn't, he doesn't really have to put a whole lot of effort uh, into actually learning something. Yeah. Which, you know. And that's it, it wonderful. Can be a curse and a blessing. Yeah. Because it, it can encourage you to kind of, I don't want to say be lazy, but it, it can encourage you to like, oh, you know. I got it. Yeah. And, and you might not. Yeah, exactly. And not leave time for you to make a mistake. or Because right. uh, right. the time will have ran out if it's due. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. But so, yeah, but no, he, he's, uh, he's doing good. He's, he's, uh, he wants to uh, study physical therapy, uh, which is amazing. Because yes. at some point in time, we all going to need that. Yep. So, you know, uh, so he doesn't want to uh, do physical therapy for athletes. He wants to do it for the general public. Well, well, to that effect, uh, he he actually would prefer athletes, and, and I I get it. Uh, and, and the money, his reasoning. Yeah. Well, not not even that really. His reasoning is that because I've I, I worked in physical therapy offices before, and and it is it is there's some truth to it, but he. Uh, it, at least in his mind, he believes that, you know, a student athlete will actually work harder in their rehabilitation process than just, you know, some random person, you know, non-athletic yeah. uh, person. Uh, he actually, he, he would much prefer work with college athletes. Uh, and especially now with the Neil deals and all that, that's that much more incentive for the college athletes to really, you know, get back on the field or the court or, you know, whatever they're doing. Yeah. Uh, so the, their, their physical therapy journey, uh, you know, at least in his mind, and you know, it does make make a good bit of sense. Uh, you know, they they would take it a bit more serious. Mm-hmm. You know, and if you're providing a service for somebody, and and how well you're providing that service is contingent on how well they're how well they are improving, right? Yeah. Just you know, Mr. Mr. Joe Smith or whoever that's just coming in because he got a bum knee. Mm-hmm. How hard is Mr. Joe really gonna work? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Versus that college kid that's, you know, hungry for it. Yep. You, you know? He so has an I incentive. Get it, I get it. Right. So he, he wants to make sure that, that the services that he's providing are actually gonna be um, utilized and you know and be effective. Yeah. Uh, so I get it. I I, I, hold no, on I do too, it. yeah. Yeah. Don't wanna feel like you can got a degree and you just dealing with somebody who ain't gonna take your your skills seriously. You wanna right. get like some benefit out of them. Because if they do better, that makes you feel better. Right. Yeah. So, uh, but going back to your parents, how long have they been married? Oh, um, um, I think it's uh, an anniversary, 35 yeah. years, I believe. Um, I know they've been together since I was, I don't know, maybe two. <laughs> uh, been so together yeah. since you were two? Yeah, yeah, they they were actually college sweethearts. Uh, they met oh, at Tulane, wow. and uh, you know, life happens, and they you know went their separate ways. Yeah, you know, and they got married and had kids and whatever else, and those uh, things didn't work out. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know how they got back together, um, but I, I know you know they they did, and uh, that's actually how how I, I met my my younger brother, my my, my step brother. But okay. I, 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 you know, and I guess as a, as a, uh, I guess a bit of an explanation, you know, yeah, my, when I talk about my dad, you know, I, I, I talk about my stepdad and especially my younger brother, you mm-hmm. know, he has my stepbrother, but you know, he, they both have been in my life since I was two. You know, ain't, ain't nothing step about that. Okay. You know? No, that's lifetime. Correct. Yeah. You know, uh, but yeah, they, they've been together. I, I want to say they've, they've been married at least 35 years okay. um, but I don't know if you tally up the whole time but <laughs> uh, maybe closer to 40 really okay wow yeah, yeah. that ain't a it's people who haven't lived 40 years and they've been together <laughs> living together two different people two different personalities together for 40 years that's a lifetime yeah 
That's it a is. lifetime. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Me and Alex I mean, to make we 19. I'm looking forward to our 20th next year on March 19th. Yeah. There you go. Congrats, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. But, uh, okay, and what is your uh, brother's name? Because we met him and his fiance too. And um, I thought the son that they have with them, I thought that was her son. Mm hmm. Nope. With your um, brother, but come to find out, it's not. Right. Uh, so, Jeremy uh, is, is, is his name. Okay. Uh, but, but no, yeah, his, his son, that, that's just that's from a, a previous uh, relationship. Okay. Uh, and then they actually are due to be married uh, November 16th, I believe. Yeah, November 16th. Yeah, November 16th. Congrats, congrats to him. Congrats to him. It's, you know, uh, you know, I, and I'm not, I'm not taking it. I, I know he'd be more than likely going to listen because I'm, I'm going to let everybody know. I'm not, I'm not, I ain't taking no shots at him, you know, but uh, it's, it's been a long time coming and I'm, I'm extremely proud of him. Yeah. Is this uh, his I'm first marriage? No, this is his first. This is his first marriage. No, that's what I said. I asked. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I misunderstood. <laughs> I, I thought you asked that this was, you know, but no, yeah, this, this is his. Uh, wow. And how old is he? He is 40. One, Jim's forty-one. Yes, yeah, forty-one. Yeah, yeah. My goodness. Well, yeah, yeah. blessings to both of them. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And what's the uh, his fiance's name? Uh, Kim. Okay. Yep. They've uh, they've been they've been with each other for a while. Okay. Uh, you know, and then I, you know, I, me personally, I, I think people. Yeah, and again, this is just my own personal opinion. I, I do think people kind of need to be with, with each other for a while. I mean, yes. uh, if, 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 you know, if, if you believe in love at first sight and all that kind of stuff. Go you know, for it. You know, it's just, you know, a marriage is a marriage. You know, it's, it's I, I guess it depends on, you know, if you believe in death to your partner and all that kind of stuff, you know, um, it's supposed to be a, a, a lifetime thing. Yeah. And, you know, it, it take a while to know somebody and, and understand that, you know, they might not be the same person that they are today later on. And Yeah. You know, well you kinda have to make a decision if, if if that's okay with you, you know. I'm a Christian and I have to say that I've tried before I bought <laughs> if that's something <laughs> with all of my husbands. But uh the first one we didn't make we didn't uh he was abusive so we didn't we didn't make it a year on paper. Oh wow. We didn't make it to our first anniversary on paper because we got married on April Fool's Day and uh -huh. I feel like I was a fool because wow. he beat me literally. Beat me uh, even uh, when I was pregnant with our daughter. God damn. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Yep. So it's like, uh, no, but I was trying to get away and I did it the wrong way. I should have just, I don't know how I would have left home, but I wasn't happy at home with my uh, living situation. And uh, it was mainly my mom. She was the head of our household. But uh, even though my dad lived in the house uh, and I was trying to get away from her. Okay. So I call myself running away from her, but I ran from the frying pan and hopped into the skillet. Nice. <laughs> so the joke was literally on me. <laughs> well, you eventually got out of the grease. Oh, yes, yeah. I did. Yeah. I did. Okay. I did. Yeah. And you know the... I know situations like that. Uh, yes, sir. And do you know, yeah. you remember the end of the Mary Tyler Moore show where she, uh, she's on the street downtown and throws her hat up in the air? Yeah. I did that after I walked out of divorce out of the bill out of the courthouse from getting my divorce from him. I was like free <laughs> and threw my hat up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we're sorry you had to go through that. That's you know, that that's it takes all experiences to create who I am today. I, I don't regret anything. Oh, yeah. yeah, we are nothing but our past experiences. Exactly. Yeah. It, it was and I, I take it as though it's it's living it's learning experience. 
Every experience makes you one uh, bit smarter. Yeah. Yeah. It was all about perspective. Exactly. You know, uh, you know the, the, I, I, at least I, I, I can assume that, that, that you know, that, that you are, are stronger because of it, you know, uh, and not that you had to go through that because, you know, you were already strong. Everybody, you yeah. know, really. It's just... It's, it's just one of them unfortunate things, and, you know, and, and you, you kind of almost wish that you had, would have foresight with certain things, really, and that you could kind of see in the future just a little bit. I like, oh, say that foresight. all the time. Forget why we yeah. can't have foresight. Why Why do, do we have to look back at our experiences and, and, and realize what happened? Why can't we have some of that in the front? <laughs> Give us foresight, but it don't work that way. You have to look back at your experience. <laughs> you and a whole lot more people. So maybe that's why I know it exists. <laughs> look, you didn't do it. That was my that was my choice. Like I say, and I made the mistake. You know, it's because you know, my thing is if if Man, woman, other, you know, regardless, you know, you, you shouldn't, I, I, for me, it's the audacity for you to even be bold enough to put your hands on somebody. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, like, you know, I, I don't really care what the reason is that, you know, and, and it, 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 it don't matter. But it's I just, must say, he was doing what his daddy did to his mom. Yeah, and, and that, and, that's, and that, that didn't make it right, but that no. was, that's why he did it. That was the way he was raised. He saw his dad beating up his mom, so he that's and why he thought it was okay to beat up his mom. That's how that's supposed to go. Yeah, that, that's just Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's, that's all they know. Yeah, they exactly. Relate to anything else? That's yeah. It's like I don't know. For me, I mean, to a certain extent, I mean, you know, one if if, if you're a kid, okay, sure, fine, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe even a young adult, but like. Once you actually are making decisions for yourself, and yeah. if you're not seeking out, you know, better knowledge or better practices and all other kind of stuff, it's on you. Mm-hmm. You know, that that's just yeah. if I, I don't know. It just okay. For, for example, because I know we we talked about this. You know, I well, I, well not cuss like a sailor because I am a sailor. I was in the navy, but, you know, <laughs> and they, everybody about me know that I cuss. <laughs> well, like I said, be yourself. Yeah. Because I cursed in the pastor's office and it, it slipped. But I my dad cursed like a sailor. So I it's right. in my blood. Right. Okay, so so to that effect, right? You know, you, if you probably don't cuss nearly as much as your dad does. No, because I'm you know, aware of it. Right. That, that's what I mean. It's like if, if you see it, if you I mean and, and I I and, 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 and I guess maybe I need a bit more perspective, you know, because I did mention that earlier, it's all about perspective, but yeah. it's just the idea that, you know, I, I, I can't imagine myself watching somebody get beat up all the time and thinking that that's how stuff's supposed to be. Yeah. That, that just, that, I, you know. That's going to affect you in some way. Right. That, that, that just, I, I, don't, way. I don't, I don't, I don't see how, how people can just think that that's okay. That's, to me, that, that's, I don't know, like you need to be under the jail. Well, he did, and then <laughs> I don't know. Okay, this interview is about y'all, mind me, but he even had people come over praying for me because I was supposed to be demonic. And it's like, are you serious? You beating me up. How are you having your pastor come over here and pray, put lay hands and pray on me, over me? What? Yes. That's that is some other weird form of manipulation. Yes. <laughs> Truly manipulative. That is Satan's son. All, all the more reason. I'm glad that you got out of that. Oh, that you and me better. both. Yes. My life is so much better. And because Alex is my third husband, but it's like every marriage has gotten better. And I feel like I'm finally with my person. There you go. Yep. We respect each other, love each other. We started off as best friends. We met in, in uh, art school. And oh. uh, the relationship just took off from now. Yeah, because he was from originally from here. Because we went to art okay. school at the Art Institute of Houston. So we met oh, in Houston. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I think that's the 
that's that's something that a lot of people are missing nowadays is is friendship. And that's you know? it. You need to be friends first. Forget it is no such thing as love is first sight. No, no, no. You need to know the person. Well, I mean, at, at the very least, because uh, my thing is that the, the honeymoon phase eventually is going to fade. Yes, it you will. Know, not, not saying that you're not going to have butterflies and all that kind of stuff, but it's just that that initial, you know, head in the sky, a whole cloud nine. Don't last. Kind of not, not saying that, you know, the relationship is going to diminish, but it's, you know, like, you know, real life hit. You know, if, if y'all decide to have kids, you know, this, just, just the stresses of life, yep. you know, will, will always be there. Yeah, and if you don't like the person that you with, you know that's that's kind of gonna make it worse. Exactly. You know, if 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 you're not friends, you know, if, if you can't talk to each other as friends, yeah, you know, it, it's that it's it's gonna be kind of difficult. Exactly. You know? uh, and, and again, at least that's that's my you know opinion. Uh, but no, you yeah. spot on. <laughs> you spot on. But like I say, this was somebody that. It was just not meant to be from the very beginning. And he wasn't somebody that I loved. This wasn't even a boyfriend that I had before. It was a guy that I met at the skating rink because he was, guess what? A snake boy. Mm. Now knowing knowing what I know about snakes in the Bible, <laughs> that should have been, I, he should have been the farthest thing away from my mind. But I thought that was cool because him and the snake boys would stomp up there at the uh, skating rink where I used to go all the time. But now I'm like, you know what? That was, and I was in for because he was, I fell for it because he was cute and fine. And I was like, everybody was like, oh, you know a snake boy? You date a snake boy? So I was how for, you know, that went to my head. Uh-huh. Being affiliated with being with the snake boy, so right. but my but head came I'm down out them clouds real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's... So Chantel, uh, tell me about your parents. Uh, so my parents, uh, my my father uh, Dennis, he's from uh, he's from here actually, he's from New Orleans. He's born and raised. Okay. Um, you know, some of his family's still here. Some of them are in Baton Rouge, kind of all over the, the U.S. Really. Okay. Um, so yeah, they, he, he has a nickname that he uh, everybody called him Ziggy. He used to um, Ziggy used to ride bikes. Yeah, Ziggy uh, <laughs> or Zig. Uh, I've heard all of them. But yeah, he was in the bike gang. I can't remember the name of the bike gang. I was really young, but um, yeah, he worked at Exxon uh, in Baton Rouge and. You know, he was in this uh, bike gang. He had two Harleys. Um, oh, motorcycle bikes. I thought you meant yeah. like bicycle. <laughs> no. oh, so a bike gang. Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, the good kind. You know, they just like to ride together. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, you know. it's my, my dad died in 97, so okay. you know, I was 13 at the time, and you know, it was, it was just, he, I guess at that point where I guess like every, every little girl, girl that needs their, uh, father, especially, yeah. um, he was completely out at that point. So, wow. yeah. Was he a um, good dad? Oh yeah, he was good. You know, for the most part, you know, he was very, he was very, uh, um, on my academics and made sure that I didn't have a boyfriend until I graduated high school. <laughs> oh my God. And did you? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm gonna say that, yeah, because Alex likes to think he he don't think Zon gonna date till she get forty. I'm like, brother, you could forget that. Have you looked at your daughter? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, and your mom? My mom, she's uh, you know, she's originally from Independence, Louisiana, but you know, lived in Baton Rouge for most of her life. Okay. Uh, and what was her name? Janice. Yeah, that's my mom's name. It was so funny because I, I always, uh, you know, I asked her one day, I was like, I said, what, you know, how did you come up with the name Chantal? Actually, it was named after a hurricane. It's so funny. She saw really? 
she was like, she thought it was a pretty name and then just kind of stood with it. Because my name was supposed to be Denise. It was uh, it was a play on names. Uh-huh. My mom's name and my dad's name. Uh-huh. And so Denise came up, even though Denise is like a you know well-known name. He thought it was funny. Yeah. Um, but they ended up being my middle name. <laughs> so. Um, well, I have a story about my mama. <laughs> And, and this is my mom was a teenager when she got pregnant with me and she thought it would be cute if she named me after her and my daddy and my name was supposed to be Belicia after her first name Bernadine and my daddy's first name he's Matthew and she thought Belicia Marvette was supposed to be my name Man. thank God <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I not say anything, right? No, thank God she changed it to Renicia. Well, Yvette, I don't even use my middle name no more. And I definitely, Yvette, what is that? It's like, no. So, no. So, thank God. And she, and that she came up with that name from three names, her favorite three little girl names. Renee, Denise, and Felicia. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, girl, you had it going on with uh, Denise. Yeah, Denise, Denise is not a bad name. No. I, I grew to love my, my first name. Yeah. First name I was a little girl. I didn't like it. Um, Chantel? Uh, I, I think I didn't like it because it, it matched my maiden name. Like, the first four letters uh, of... My my first name and my maiden name are identical, so it's you know that C H A N. But no, it's Chantal Cheney. Is this? So that's what I didn't like about it. Oh, okay. As I got older, so I would get nicknames like Tall, even though I'm short, and then I would get other nicknames like CC because of my first and last name. Yeah, um, that's cute, CC. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but I don't understand Tall. Oh, they was being funny? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah mm. my, um, but yeah, my mom, she, she worked with the school board, East Baton Rouge school board system for all my life. Um, she was actually, well, she was going to retire like two years uh, before um, she died from cancer. But, you know, didn't really hit retirement just yet. Okay. Yeah, um, she died in, in uh, 2011. Okay. So, yeah. so yeah, I, I, both, I lost both my parents pretty young. Wow. Because yeah, yeah. you say Mila was, what, five months old when she yeah, died? it was five months, yeah. When, wow. Uh, yeah. So they met each other, but, you know, Mila just doesn't remember. Cause yeah. She's a, she's a baby. So teeny, teeny, teeny weeny. Wasn't six months right. old yet. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, um, and again, my condolences for both of your parents. But, um, okay. uh, so going back to her cancer, um, how did she come to know about that? Um, the first time uh, she she received a cancer diagnosis, she was actually at work. She uh, she was looking for a box. She was trying to get something off the top shelf at work, mm-hmm. and a box fell on her. And it fell on her chest and hit her right in the middle of her chest. Ooh. And you know it bruised. And she was you know just watching it because in her mind you know box fell okay big deal whatever. Yeah. But after that, like the pain just never went away. It actually got worse. Wow. So she went in for a mammogram and mm-hmm. they, you know, found some abnormalities there as far as just on that, that mammogram. They had to do a little bit more, like you could just biopsy and just end up doing a, a ultrasound mm-hmm. with, because you know, they couldn't really see too much. They knew something was going on, but they couldn't really find anything. They really didn't find anything until they did uh, the ultrasound. It's kind of like me, really, but... Uh, they, that's when they found out that she had cancer. It, it, of course, the biopsy ruled it out, but as far as like they're having cancer, but um, ruled it as having cancer. But, wow. Yeah. So that was in 06. And then, you know, she went through 
chemo treatment, she went through radiation, uh, you know, all the things that people go through, uh, you know, after find out they have cancer. And she was in remission for a good bit. Uh, she, her cancer came back, I want to say that was like early 2010. Uh-huh. Yeah, it came back in early 2010, and we didn't know. Um, and it came back pretty aggressive. Oh, wow. And she went through treatment again, but it was already metastasized. Yeah. Pretty much everywhere, uh, you know, where it was affecting some of her lungs, but it was affecting mostly her, her other vital organs. And that's funny how yeah. it could go from your breast to affecting other areas of your body. Right. So it, it just like. Are, they, they spread. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Okay, and the second time it came back, was it the same kind of cancer? It it was uh, the first time it, it she had cancer. She had was was called triple negative. Okay, so that that's what she had. But hers was still kind of like a her two, where a hormones were still kind of involved, uh-huh. but more of triple negative, where it didn't really hit. It hit one of her limb nodes, but uh-huh. not. Too point where it was spreading so they were able to actually catch it in time the second one was definitely hormone based it was what they call her two uh breast cancer uh and her it was and i can't remember exactly which one because there's you know we we have different types of names for it now versus it like 2011 okay it was pretty still pretty basic okay uh, so and can you repeat the name of the second the second time it came back what was it called hers two yeah, her two uh, hormonal is like a hormonal based cancer. Okay. So with hers, it yeah, she had I think one tumor, but it was more of a metastatic type of cancer where it spread a lot quicker. So she had the most aggressive type of cancer the second time around. Okay. Um. So that that's when you know she found out it was already metastasized when she found out. Oh wow! Uh, she just wasn't really feeling like herself. And, you know, at that point, she was still trying to really find herself again and, and you know, be normal. Mm-hmm. The year and after that. So, you know, because this is one of the things they don't tell you about cancer is that it changes you forever, obviously, but it changes your body forever. Yep. <laughs> so no, that, I mean, no kidding. Going through all that chemo, you can't help yeah. but be a different person. Yes. Yeah? Yes. So that's like when I, uh, because I grew up having uh, migraine headaches and to the point to where I couldn't even stand uh, light, even whether natural or uh, 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 like a light in the house. I'd have to pull the covers over my head and lay really still and breathe really shallow in order to try to keep the pain away. And uh my mom started blaming it. She was blaming it though, because it started happening around when I was in third grade, and she was blaming it on me needing my glasses, me needing to adjust to my brand new prescribed glasses. And I was like, "No, mama," because I knew she was saying that I. She didn't believe that I was wearing my glasses at school when I knew I was wearing my glasses at school because I couldn't see the board without them. So how was I not wearing my glasses at school? She didn't believe that. <laughs> So, uh, and, and so we was arguing, going back and forth over that. I just got tired of arguing. So as soon as I could get old enough to where I could start mess self-medicating, and that was like in junior high, I started self-medicating myself to keep the headaches away and not have to deal with the pain and, and having to go through and argue with over my eyes still needing to adjust. Cause it's like nobody's eyes should take years to adjust to their prescribed glasses that are supposed to help with eye strain. It's more than eye strain. But come to find out, seven days after I gave birth to Zon, <laughs> I felt, I don't know whether I heard or I felt a pop in my head. And that was my, uh, it was an arteriovenous malformation. And that was like, I had my, literally, my wires were twisted in my head. And that was what was caused, what had caused my headaches all them years. 
So I had been self-medicating myself all them years to keep the headaches at bay and manage the pain in order not to uh, suffer with it. But uh, And then it all came to a head at once. And uh, seven days after I gave birth to her, because I had my brain stroke on December 8th, I had her on December 1st. She was She came early on the first. And I feel like God got her out of the way so that he could take me and deal with me by myself. Right. Yeah, because we were expecting her on the 8th. He, she came on the 1st. I went into premature labor with her. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So he's like, okay, I'm going to get her out of the way. Because me and Alice had, you know, it was like she was going to be... Her name, we named her after, I told y'all, we met in uh, in art school. And we learned, for the first time, both of us learned about, we didn't have all our classes together, but both of us learned about this artist named Jean-Michel Basquiat, who was, okay, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> that's, her name is a play on his. Oh. And, you know, he was an artist too. So right. that's just, everybody we tell that story to, they're like, even her art school, where she is at now at uh, Willow, She's like, oh, my God. So you're named after the artist, Zama Michelle. Like, yeah. But. Uh, I never told her. Yeah. Never actually... She's named after Jean-Michel Basquiat. But th- we got Zon because that's that's that was also Alex is into sci-fi. And one of his favorite shows called, I think it was Farscape. The main character's name was Zon. Okay. So. And, you know, I thought, I was like, well, why don't we name her Jean-Michel? He was like, well, how about we do this? Well, how about we name her Zahn, like the character off of Farscape, with Michelle? I was like, okay, we'll do that. So her name is a combination of two, the art, the Haitian artist and uh, the Farscape character. That's awesome. Yeah. And it means, I forget, I can't think of what a name means, but it means it has two, each name has a certain meaning and both of them are related to God. Like one is blessing and one is something else. I, I'll, uh, I'll have to look that up. She has a poster that I made for her 10th birthday that uh, I actually printed out what the meaning of each name was and it's related to uh, the Bible. Like God is God's gracious one and something else. But yeah. So that's what her name is based on. But no, everybody else who just know about Jean-Michel Basquiat, because everybody's not into sci-fi, and they don't know about the show Farscape, we tell them, yeah, she was named after Jean-Michel Basquiat. Yeah? Okay. So. That's cool. That's cool. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, were your parents married, Chantel? Uh, no, they were not. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I was, uh, I'm actually the youngest, uh, I guess, as far as, like, a combination of putting my, my dad's children together and my mom's. Okay. Um, I'm the youngest. My sister is, uh, she's four years older than me. Okay. So, me and my, my sister, we have the same dad. Uh, and then my brother, me and my brother have the same mother. So, uh, he's seven years older than me. Uh, so, Sonia, it's Adrian, Sonia, and me. So, yeah. Adrian is your brother? Adrian is my brother. Yeah. Wow. Adrian, Sonia, S O N I A? Uh, S O N Y A. Okay. Wow. I'm sorry, J A. I'm sorry. Okay. She got hit me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, so uh, that's, that's my siblings. And I, I didn't meet my, my, me and my brother, we grew up together. So I've uh, been around my brother since birth. Uh, and he still, he lives in Ascension Parish, so none of us actually, you know, like, I guess left Louisiana. I did technically, but came back, so, um, but yeah. Okay. My sister, me and my sister, we met, actually we met around the time my dad died. I, I, that's when I found out I actually had a sister. That's a whole roller coaster in itself. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know I had a sister and also met my sister around the time that my dad died. He had um, his heart issues, and uh, he had a pacemaker for like most of my life. But you know, other things went wrong, and 
you know, he needed an actual heart, but his body gave out before he could actually. Oh, yeah. wow. So, yeah, his, the whole thing started off with an enlarged heart uh, before he even got the uh, pacemaker. So he's always had some, like, some type of health issues when it came to his, I guess, you know, dealing around his heart. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. I was upset at first because, you know, I was like, oh, I won't always want a sister. Yeah. Like, I didn't care if she was older or younger than me in my mind at the time. I'm like, I want a, I want a younger sister because, yeah. you know, I'm like, how can I have an older sister? Mm-hmm. You know? So I was always like, hey, you know, can I have another sibling? You know? I guess I was tired of being a baby, too. I think that was one of the things. You should have loved being a baby. Oh, gosh. Everybody thought that, you know, I was either too young for stuff or I was like, you know, oh, she's the baby, so she's the youngest, then you have to treat her like a baby. So mm. that was like one of my biggest pet peeves. Yeah. Everybody wanted to treat me like a baby. Like I was, I didn't know better. It was so aggravating. Okay, so you but, always hated being the oldest because, I mean, being the youngest because nobody respected you. Right. Wow. And I always thought to myself, like, if I got a younger sibling, like, even if they tried That would free you up. Sibling, <laughs> I, I would make sure that didn't happen. You know, like, you think, I'm not going to do that to you. I won't be, I won't be. Like, oh, wow. Yeah. That's like, uh, Zahn told me that she doesn't want just one kid because she, she doesn't, you know, her, all her siblings live in, uh, Houston. And wow. her middle sister, who was the baby before we had her, uh, lived in D.C. And one time she was in the Army. But uh, now she's out of the Army and she lives back in Houston, too. But she says she hardly sees them. They don't call and check on her much. So it's like she's like she doesn't want to have a family like that where she got one child with old older siblings. She wants all of her kids around the same age raised up together which like my other three did but yeah. me and Alex got that. together years later and that's funny because I had had my tubes tied after I had so she's a miracle she's a miracle baby because I had my tubes tied after I had my 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 youngest daughter my third my her older sister the youngest who was a baby when I mean the daughter that was the youngest the old when I had Zon I had my tubes tied the day I had her. Oh, wow. So, Man. Zahn is a miracle. Wow. <laughs> Zahn is a miracle. I got pregnant with one tube. Well, yeah, they said, well, they said it's not completely 100%. So, yep. yeah, that's what they mean. Yeah. Goodness. So, it failed on reason. It fell for a reason. God <laughs> was God. I said I was done, but God was like, "Nope, I think you got one more in you." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks be to God. I love her to death. That's my little buddy. That's kind of a fear of of us. We <laughs> we got one out the house. He and Kyle, you got another. We got about five years. It's like, oh Lord. Oof. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> He's the one that makes that's making sure that we don't have it anymore. So, I mean, I guess if you talk about like as far as like you going through chemo and stuff like that, that would you would think that would make me uh, infertile, but you know, I really don't know. So. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't want any more Bradley? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Oh, yeah. why? 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 We're perfectly happy with our our uh, nieces and nephews. <laughs> so, okay, hold on. How many? That's another question I had. How many nieces and nephews do you guys have? So well, that's kind of a loaded question, really. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, when, okay. Well, I guess. Loaded. Well, no. Since you bragging on y'all got your nieces and nephews, come on. How many y'all got? Well, the younger ones. The youngest ones, two. He, they're, uh, well, Lynx just made four, and um, Tazi is, Tazi is one. Right, yeah. So my, my sister, my, my younger sister, not my youngest, mm-hmm. but my younger sister. Now, well, so I guess I got to go back a little bit further then. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I grew up within the household that I grew up in mm-hmm. as a middle child. Okay. I, I, 
two brothers, an older and a younger. Okay. And uh, that my older brother, Jeremy, uh, we both have the same mother and father. Mm -hmm. My younger brother uh, is my stepdad's son from a previous marriage. marriage. Okay. Well, my biological father has nine kids. Whoa. Is it nine? Yeah, I think, I think it's... I think including me is nine. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So he has nine children, and um, all of us except for two have children. Uh, okay. He has uh, the youngest, was she, what, 13? Yes, she's the same age as me. So the youngest sibling, uh, my youngest sister is 13, which I, I still haven't met yet. <laughs> um, you have a uh, sister that's 13? Yes. Uh, and you're how old? I am 39. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it, 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 you know, it, 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 it ain't me. It ain't me. <laughs> so, <laughs> daddy needs to stop. Uh, I would, I would, you know, it, it, he gonna do what he gonna do. You know, it's, it, it's, it ain't me. So, I uh, am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's no, ridiculous. And Zon complained about having a sister that's 17 years older than her. <laughs> well, keep in mind, I think, I think Jeremy, I guess out of all of us, I think my oldest brother, he's actually the middle. I'm right yeah. under him. We have two more older sisters and two more older brothers. Uh -huh. um, then it's my brother Jeremy, then myself. I have two younger sisters and then uh, the youngest sister. Okay. Uh, and let's see, my oldest, I don't know if Mona or Star is older, either one, but, hey, no, uh, as older. both of my older sisters have at least two children. Okay. Uh, my oldest, oldest is three children. Oh, oh, right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's a total of five right there. Uh, you know, nieces and or nephews. Okay, so right. obviously y'all don't buy for all of these children during holidays, huh? No, no, not not like a you know, oh, you know, I ain't, I ain't messing like up. this is from I mean, AT not, so and so, this is from Uncle so and so. It's not, well, I mean, you know, well, like, like their Christmas, right? Yeah, well, with that and you know, with with us, life just kind of just happens, really. Yeah. Hard. You know, we, we aren't as close as I, I would like to be. Not yeah. that anybody is really at odds with nobody. Yeah. It's, it's just it's life. kind of one of the things. Um, it's just my, life. Right. My younger sister, we're actually fairly close with each other. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny. Uh, if 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 she talks within the family, she's basically the female version of me. Wow. Uh, you know, is That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, we, we, we think very similar. You you would think that we were raised in the same household, really. Wow. Um, that blood runs but, deep. You're right. <laughs> well, I, I, I was kind of her protector, but also the instigator when she was coming up. You know, I, I remember I, I convinced her one day to roll down a hill on a skateboard, and she did it and crashed in the ditch. You know. And but, I know you got in trouble for that, right? Uh, No, because I said that she did it on her own. <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> but, you know, then the next day, some little boy was picking on us, so, I, you know, I had to go put him in his place. You wow. Know? So that, that's kind of the bond that, that we have. And, and she has uh, two two young children. My older brother, he has uh, two uh, two kids. Uh, and my, my younger brother, he has a daughter. Uh, so those really are the ones that, that we, you know, kind of brag on a lot mm -hmm. uh, mainly because we see them the most quite honestly okay uh, plus uh, yeah. uh, i guess like nieces and nephews they have their adults now and i think right, like yeah. two of them at least two of them have their own kids yeah so, okay so how many siblings do you guys have how many brothers do you have bradley and how many sisters all together between mom and daddy so out of all of the parents, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, all of all of the parents. Um, I have one, two, three, four brothers, and one, two, three, four, five sisters. Okay. Um. So yeah. So I, oh, actually, no, it's ten of us. 
can include myself. Not a, yeah. yeah. yeah so it's okay. Wow. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. and Chantel, you, how many brothers and how many sisters? One brother and one sister. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and All my right. brother, he has, uh, yeah. he has kiddos as well. My sister has a stepdaughter, but, um, like Kennedy is like a year older than Davy. Right, yeah. So, um, but yeah, my brother, he has Caleb, he has uh, Abby, well, Abigail, and uh, and Micah. So, Micah is the youngest. Uh, actually, both of them are pretty young. Caleb's a teenager, he's like 15 now. Um, see, is he 15 or is he older than that? I have to think about it. Goodness, I haven't, I haven't seen any of them in a while. Um, they live, but, they, or do they live local? Locally? They live. They live in a in Ascension Parish. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I talk to them on the phone. And Caleb, I mean, Micah loves to talk. Caleb will talk to me to a certain extent, and he go on about his business. Mm-hmm. But you know, and then Abby, she she runs around. So it's it's you know, she's the baby. No, Abby's like baby. Abby's six now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Caleb's four. Abby six. Yeah. So they. Like, you know, at that age, you're doing their own thing. Yeah. You know, trying to, you know, just be kids, really. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so, um, and then you, one thing you mentioned that I want to come back to, it's more than one type of uh, breast cancer. Yes. I will touch you back on that when we come up to talking about you, because you've had uh, a bout with cancer yourself, an yes. ordeal. Uh- yeah. So, um, oh, also, do you guys believe that you have the mentality of your birth order? Your because you're the middle child, right, Bradley? Uh, yeah. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> do you think you have a middle child's mentality? Um, did you ever feel left out? Or oh, like no. nobody was listening to you or paying you attention. No, well, so how how I grew up, I'm, I'm, truth be told, I've kind of always been a loner. Okay. You know? And, and I, I don't mean that in like a you know, oh, woe is me kind. I just and this is gonna sound worse than it than it is. I, I don't like people really. <laughs> uh, yes, you do. <laughs> I, no, I really don't. <laughs> so uh, you I, just tolerate me. No, no, I, I, I don't. I, I like talking, right? I, I'll, I'll have conversations, but it's, it's not necessarily something that I, that I seek out. Uh, uh-huh. As a kid, and, and my, my parents, they'll tell you, you know, give me my bike, and I'm gone for the whole day. Where would and, you go? Uh, I, I would just ride. I would just ride around the neighborhood by myself, and I didn't necessarily need anybody else. Right. Actually, even my mom, she would she would fuss at me when I was in school. Uh, they, they act, well, at least for a little while, they were kind of worried, you know, you know, have these people, you know, the kids or whoever I was going to school with, they would call the house. Mm-hmm. I guess just kind of wanting to talk. But, yeah. you know, and, and my response is, what you calling me for? Oh. Like, see you at school tomorrow. <laughs> like, why, why are you calling me? Rude. And, and, well, I, you, know, and, and, you know, even little girls, they call the house. I'm like, what? What you want? Like, why? Oh, my God. Like, you know, I, and, it's just, but how would they get your number? Well, but you know, this was back in the day. You know, you had to have the school directory and all that kind of stuff. Oh, okay, know? so uh, they get your number off the directory, right? So yeah. you wouldn't ask them how you get my number. No, I, I really didn't care. <laughs> I, I, was, I was more concerned why you, why you called me. You know, like, <sighs> you know, this is my time to be away from. Well, and, and I guess I'll, I'll kind of explain. So. The school that I went to when I was, you know, young before, uh, I guess before maybe like the last year of middle school, it was a very, very, very small uh, black, a predominantly black uh, Catholic school. Mm-hmm. And uh, I started at that school daycare and uh, went all the way to seventh grade. It was it was a uh, daycare through eighth grade program. And uh, it's it's. I, I don't know how many other schools are like that, and it was it, this was in Baton Rouge. Mm. But um, I went to school with the same twelve kids. They, you know, I mean, sure, some kids came and left and whatever else, but for the most part, it was the same twelve kids from daycare to like seventh grade. Oh my god! And and when 
when I say 12, that's how large or small, rather, each class was. was. It literally was only 12 kids in the whole grade. Wow. You know, so it, it was, it was and a you are, deprivation. Hold on. So yeah. it was only one class per grade? Yes. So that was a yeah. real small school. Very, very, very small. Wow. Very small. Um, so it, I, it, in, 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 a, in a sense, it, it was a little bit of aggravation. And, uh, you know, I'm also the, the middle, you know, kid. So, mm-hmm. you know, I got, I got an older brother and a younger brother. I mean, you know, and, and we did, you know, brothers, you know, it was, it was a house full of boys. My mom was the only girl. And yeah. Well, my mom was a dog. You know, they were the only girls in the house. Yeah. You know, so I, I would just go ride my bike just to get away, you know. And uh, so I, I don't I don't necessarily think I've ever felt left out of anything. If I wanted to be included, I was going to be included. And if you wasn't going to include me, you was going to fight. So you didn't you know? have that Jan syndrome from the Brady Bunch? Oh, no. No. <laughs> Uh, if, if I wanted to be included, I was going to be included. She always in, you know? was complaining about people forgetting about her. <laughs> well, I, I, truth be told, I, I, I would have much rather people forget about Marcia, me. Marcia, Marcia, Marcia. <laughs> <laughs> no, leave me alone. Let me go do what I'm going to do. Ooh, wow. Yeah, so yeah, no, I, 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 you know, I, and, and I don't know, maybe, maybe that's, that's just kind of my perspective reflecting on it. Maybe other people have, you know, a different, different opinion. But, mm-hmm. You know, no, I, I've never really, you know, I, and of course I, I would see, you know, all the middle child syndrome or whatever. I, I, I never really, you know. Had that. Yeah, no. If anything, everybody called me old. Uh, I come to find out in, in recent years. I think you old, have an old soul. Well, some of, some of my old uh, high school classmates, I eventually, you know, went to a different school, which was much bigger. Mm-hmm. Uh, but apparently, even to them, I've I've always been old man Rose. Yeah. So you know, it, I guess that's that's just kind of how that played out. Yeah. And you, Chantel, you ever felt like you was the, the uh, poster child yeah. for a younger kid, the youngest? Oh yeah. Um, you know, I told you how everybody like you know they wanted to, I guess shelter me from everything yes. bad or like anything that you know, it felt like I should be a part of or whatever you know and I, I'm like y'all gotta understand like okay I am you know at the time most of the girls in my family some of them yeah they were my age but they they also live like on the plaza like they live here mm-hmm. so I didn't really see them as much but all the boys that was around my age most of them lived like Super close to me, mm-hmm. so I grew up with like just playing with my my you know, boys from around my brother. He taught me how to fight. He taught me how to wrestle. He taught me how to do like a bunch of stuff. So, mm-hmm. um, and then you know I'm hanging with my my freaking boy cousins all the time. So, and then the girls, you pretty you know, tough. Like, yes, I want to. I'm a girl, so like I have older girl cousins. Yeah, so I want to be in somebody's business. I, I was. The, I, I I will tell you this. I was the queen of ear hustling. Like, I, was, I, <laughs> I think that's part of being a girl. I knew what everything was going on, even when people that they, I'm sitting there looking clueless on purpose because you know I'm like, all right, I'm not gonna say anything. Yeah, you know, I'm not supposed to know what's going on. Exactly. So, but I know everything. <laughs> Did you ever brag on knowing everything? No, never. Like, I, me and my brother would talk about, like, certain things, mm-hmm. and I was like, yeah, and, and blah, 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 and it would just come out, and he was like, how do you know that? And I was like, I was listening. <laughs> <laughs> like, people talk loud in this family, so, I mean, you can't really, if you really pay attention, you can't really miss it. Like, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> but it was that. I was, I was a lot older in my mind than, you know, what people thought. Yeah. And, one of my biggest things as far as a definite pet peeve as far as going back on, oh, that's the baby, was if, you know, there was a friend, uh, like one of my mom's friends and mm-hmm. their kids, they were yeah. younger or whatever, or like close to my age, they would automatically match me up. Mm-hmm. Even with some of my family members, like my cousins or whatever, they'll match me up with my cousins. And, you know, me and the mindset I'm at and my age, I'm like, we don't relate at all. Like, the only thing that made me remember, I'm a, I was a Disney movie kid, so mm-hmm. we can relate on that, you know? But wow. everything else, it, 
like all the you know some of the childish things like like okay around the time when some kids they, they I still play with baby dolls like I stopped playing with dolls like super young so like how old I, I was in elementary school for sure I think I was like at least like seven the, or eight. huh yeah, I don't know. No, I have. I remember getting. I used to have every major baby doll that came out, and of course, she had to be black because my mama had a thing. We ain't buying no white dolls, so uh, well, I had, you know, like a Barbie. I only had like maybe one Barbie in my life, and it's because she looked exactly like me. Uh, and she had roller skates, and I loved some, you know, roller blades. Uh-huh. So I was like, you know, so. And then I, I remember having the Kenya doll. I don't know if you remember those. Yeah. But, the Kenya doll I had, and it's mainly because she looked like me, and I was like, I thought that was cool. So yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, but yeah, as, as far as like a doll stage, like, you know how people want to cabbage patch dolls and stuff like that. Girl, like, I had like, every Barbie major dolls. doll that was. Like, baby, I, I, this and that. Now, my mama would, would never give never, me a baby alive because she knew that I feeding too, she'd have I to clean it one. because yeah, her I friends. Had a baby alive. Her friends, I remember Rainbow Bright. Yeah. Um, and Rainbow Bright, I was like three. I don't know how I remember that, but I remember that I loved Rainbow Bright. And wow. That one. And a baby alive a little bit after that, like the one that had a weird smell to it. And like, you know, it, it was like you could fill it up with water. Uh huh. But, um, you know, I can count on one hand how many dolls I had. <laughs> no, I was a doll person, a baby doll. <laughs> Not because I wasn't into now. I got to the age where I was because I had the Barbie uh Corvette, I had the camper, I had the dream house, but I had my Barbie dolls. But when I was a little girl, I loved baby dolls too. Yeah, like I like stuffed animals, like a uh, teddy bear, like I had teddy reptions, all that stuff. Yeah, and I think I just like to read along with the books and stuff. Yeah, but, oh, so yeah. you even love reading as a child? Yeah. Yeah, cool. like you remember American Girl? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Babysitter Club. Yeah. Uh, Goosebumps. Yep. I had to have all the books. No, I didn't do scary Castle. books when I was little. I yeah, couldn't. I didn't do Goosebumps. Novels in, in elementary school, so. Uh-uh. <laughs> Which was another another thing that was kind of similar from my older cousins because one of my cousins she she loved reading uh, thriller books. Mm-hmm. And she loved, like, she she had a collection of Stephen King books. And I would ask her, like, hey, can I borrow this book? Like, after she would finish reading it, mm-hmm. I asked her, can I borrow it? And I'll read it, and then I'll bring it back. So she wow. was very my life if I didn't. So, but uh, <laughs> I was I was that kid. So I was definitely a tomboy because, you know, of course. Being around you know, boys. Around, I was, too. Boys. So but, growing up being around a bunch of boys, even like in my neighborhood, like growing up, like mm-hmm. two of my really good friends, they were boys, they were brothers. So, you know, and I was always in that stage where it's like, whatever Adrian did, I could do that too. It's not like I wanted to just copy completely from him. But yeah. It was like, I think it was growing stemming from when I was younger because like he would teach me how to do certain things like you know like I said he'd teach me how to dance mm-hmm. and you know teach me how to fight all that type of stuff mm-hmm. most of the stuff that I learned you know being a kid was from my brother yeah. so you know that that really played a role in everything else I did when I got older yeah. I went through a phase where I was uh, wearing my brother's clothes in middle school mm-hmm. so like his Jabo jeans his like these college shirts and stuff like that, polo shirts. Like I was dressing like a straight up boy in middle in middle school. So wow, I went through that phase. <laughs> it, okay, it phased out in eighth grade though. So you know, I was trying to, I guess, be more girly. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. But no, I can relate because I was a dumb boy. I grew up, and I always seemed to seem like girls was always jealous of me, and I got along better with boys. Yes. Because of girls not being, not really being, it's like one day they be my friend and the next day they ignore me or being mean uh, to me. I, I got so sick of that. Yes. yes. And so it's like, I'm so glad I finally met somebody who can relate. So it's like, I got, I, just, I was just like, okay, well, forget y'all. Since the boys, and, and come to find out later, they were friends with me because they liked me, but I didn't care. It's like, okay, they nice to me. So I'm gonna hang with them, and we was the best best of friends. And 
I grew up, even to this day, the last interview I did was with one of my friends from high school, Tyrone Jones, him and his wife. Yeah. But we met and he he told me that story. Did you tell people the way we met where I met you? I, I asked him that. I was like, do you remember where we met? He said, yeah, on the monkey balls. Because <laughs> I was sitting on the monkey balls at the high school waiting on one of my other friends. <sighs> yeah. But, uh, and I just. Thing, like, I would, like, I, I would want to make friends with other girls. But, you know, it's that same thing. It's like, they would just. Like, I had two best friend girls, like, when I was younger, and then in high school, I had a, I had a best friend. I had a guy best friend, I had a girl best friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, like, the, the younger ones, like, when I was younger, um, was Cookie and Lindsay. Like, I grew up with Cookie because she lived right across the street from me. And then Lindsay, I pretty much grew up with her, too. And I was trying to, you know, hang out with them together, like, introduce. I remember that, that uh, you know, as far as, like, me wanted to make sure that they got along and they were, you know, cool with each other. Mm-hmm. Um, but then they switched up on me, too. It was just weird. I don't know if what happened, really. It was like, I remember one time we went camping, went on this camping trip, and one of them took my ring, the ring that my dad gave me, mm-hmm. and none of them would actually fess up. And I was like, I don't know who did it, but I remember I put it here, and now it's gone. Um, and I, I made sure that I put it in a place where it wouldn't fall down. Mm-hmm. So I was very particular kid making sure that where I put my stuff I knew exactly what it was yeah but you know that made me fall out and then it was other things that they would come out and say like well I didn't like this and you know I don't like you because of this is like wait where did that come from exactly so that's how you really feel about me okay yeah and it's like where is this coming from so it's like I would just leave the whole situation alone yeah and just be done with it Mm -hmm. but Ugh, it was it was just so exhausting trying to you know be friends with girls because I mean honestly coming up girls were just messy and then you know I would you know the like girls I really wanted to be friends with because I thought they were cool they didn't mm. think I was cool enough so yeah. it was like we got that girl well, we got the same story so <laughs> yeah being friends with boys it was like I like this oh you like that too like if I say anything about anime or like He Man or like wrestling yeah especially. yeah that was enough yeah <laughs> and we would just we would just talk about the stuff we like or like just comics and stuff like that yeah it was just easier you yeah. know it's because it's, it's, it's like you didn't have to try stuff. out right with girls you had to try out for their friendship win right. them over with I boys was it was just like you just have something in common and you friends they didn't yeah. care about how you was dressed how your hair was combed how okay. whatever you know, it's like with girls, it's, friendship wasn't that easy. Yeah. But I, I had a. Like, how are you feeling today? Like, are you going to turn against me today, or mm-hmm. are you going to be cool with me? Yeah. That's exhausting. Yeah. So it's like, okay, well, let's. I just stopped trying at one point. <laughs> yeah. But so. you know, high school was a little different because it was more so like making friends. Like, okay, like I would make friends with boys. Like it would just, you know. You relate to this, you like this, you don't like this, or whatever. Even if we don't agree on certain things, like, you know, I, I did have a good bit of friends where it was just like, we cool. And, yeah. You know. Yeah. But, yeah, I can definitely relate to that. That childhood friendship so weird. <laughs> Very. I was going to say, but my one friend, I did have a friend from kindergarten all the way up to, we even had a business together after we graduated from school. And, uh, after me and my second husband, who became their friend, her and her husband's friend, uh, divorced, it's like our friendship. And then when I started looking back over the years, some of the stuff that she had did, even when we was in school, it was like, that wasn't very nice. But I ignored it because, you know, I wanted her to be my friend because yeah. we had been, I was holding on to the length of our friendship. And when I would tell people that we had been friends since, kindergarten you know people be like wow you know and I think I kind of let that go to my head that I had somebody I was still friends with that person that I had known since kindergarten and I let that take over but and then another uh, friend I had actually she was my second husband's sister we were best friends in high school and uh, our friendship 
got pretty much not severed because we still stay in touch and we still friendly with that with each other but of course since i divorced her brother that you know became something else but it was like in high school it was me her and uh our other friend and they gave all three of us uh nicknames according to our colors (laughs) yeah it was uh uh i can't think of it but it was hold on Remind me of the nicknames we had for each other in, um, in high school. Something was, it was something yellow. Then it was dirty red. I was about to ask if it was Power Ranger related, but no. No, no. <laughs> it was based on colors because we were three different skin tones. One was real okay. high yellow. One was a uh, I was medium, and then uh, my uh, friend, my other friend was uh, darker. I think she was dirty red. Yep. And that really, I ain't gonna lie, that really bothers me. (laughs) Well, well, my thing is that, you know. That was in the time where guys used to say, come here, red, come here, yellow. Right, and I, 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 I get that, but it's just. Especially in, in you know in the South, whether you're Louisiana, in any anywhere in the South, more than likely if you black, you some 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 flavor of Creole. Yes. You know, it's like okay, I'm I'm a black man, but I got straight hair. Yeah. You know, like yeah. you know, people look at me all the time. Oh, what are you? I, what, what you mean? What am I? Like like you don't have an uncle that look like me. Yeah. You know, like that. It, it, it really aggravates me because you know. And, and I don't know, I guess if um, I'm on a soapbox now, so sorry about that. But, no. <laughs> you know, it's like black people can make any shade of person. Exactly. Like, you know, like why why all of a sudden now is this like a detriment? Yeah. Like that, that's the thing I, I, just, I just really don't get. You yeah. know, it'd be different if, you know, I don't know, you were some other race and came out some crazy looking color that's mm-hmm. like. That nobody had ever like, seen before. It's like, okay. Right, right. Like if you came out purple, then it'd be like, okay, yeah. You like, ain't um, never seen a purple person before. Okay, yeah, right. that's something you need. But if, if if you grew up in the South, you see, you know, all the, combinations. The, the, the right, and and it's, it's it's so aggravating to me when people do that because you're creating an issue when there is none. Yeah, like just to laughs or or to to I don't know to make themselves feel better about mm-hmm. themselves. So and, and that's to me, it's, it seems really silly, and and I I really. I guess I feel for people who go through that because the person that's messing with them more than it is is usually about them more so than the person that they yeah. talk to. Yeah. You know, if, if you got an issue with somebody's color, that actually says more about you. Well, and I don't think, say that you're an issue with. like I say, at the point, this was like way back in the year, I'm mean, in the days where it was like boys would say, hey, come here, girl. Hey, yellow, yellow, what you doing? Right. Yellow, yeah. you know, come here, I yellow bone. That. Red bone, all that you know was a that was a thing. So I guess yeah. they thought that was their way of hollering at us. But yeah, it's like that was the, the quickest way of getting your attention was to highlight your skin color. Yeah, I mean, I mean they would even even say things like, "Oh, hey, red shirt," like that mm-hmm. type of thing, whatever. And and you know the and, and and of course I even hate to say this because you know. It's, there, there, there are two sides to each coin. Most guys are not going to do something if it's not going to work. Yep. So at some point in time, they say red or, you know, red shirt or whatever, at some point in time, they have to work on somebody. Yeah, because they wouldn't do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, 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 that, 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 and I'm so, thinking, who would be that stupid? I don't know. <laughs> you know, so I, and I'm not making excuses for them either, but it's just the simple fact that if I'm trying to talk to somebody in a particular way and not actually getting any play from that, I'm going to stop doing that. Like, but, you need to learn my name. Yeah, I, I'm know, not a color. But just excuse me. You know, like, you know, like, hey, how you doing? Yeah, uh, just, we didn't necessarily um, like it, but I uh, that was that was at the time that was happening. Yeah. And yeah. that was the easiest way to get our attention or to, you know, 
for them to uh, direct the group of us. Hey, y'all, you know, instead of saying, hey, ladies, you know, hey, right. girls. It was like, as, as I'm saying this, I now start to understand why everybody back in the day considered me an old man. Cause yeah, because you got a lot of pet peeves. <laughs> Well, it's not even like we, even my own son. When I see him, is you know, hey, hey, hello, sir, how are you? Mm -hmm. My nephew, you know, hello, sir. When you know, my my daughter, you know, hello, ma'am. Yeah, you know, it's, it's to me, it's, it's a certain level of respect. Yeah, I do that with my kids too. Yeah, and and and, and well, I, I actually got in trouble with the military saying that, but you know, I had to explain to them, look, I'm from the south. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> did your dad talk to you dad, like that? <laughs> Well, well, their their thing, if you know, especially the, the higher up enlisted, you know, don't call me sir. I work for them because that's that's actually how you address officers. You you see the sir or ma'am, you know, the enlisted, you essentially call them by their rank, whatever that is. Yeah. It's a chief, well, at least in the navy, it's a chief. This is first class, second class, you know, whatever, or petty officer, all that kind of stuff. You know, and and you know, sure, every once in a while, I'll slip up. Oh yes, sir. I mean, uh, uh yes, chief. Mm -hmm. You know, and this, but. And you know, kind of had to explain to them, you know, and then, and I guess, you know, sure, I, if, so to speak, I guess I have an old soul, but you know, my parents also taught me manners, you know, yeah. <laughs> so, like, you know, yeah. so it's, it's, it's that, that's that's a real pet peeve for me when, you know, if, if you're trying to highlight the girl, cool, fine, that's whatever, because you're gonna do what you're gonna do, yeah, like, like calling somebody out their name, not gonna get you the response that you think that you want, yeah, but you'd be like, surprised with some girls. Right, and, and that, that's some like, girls that to get any attention that would work for them. And and then for me at least, the question is, do you really want somebody like that? Well, that's to each his own. We yeah, never talked to anybody sure. who referred to us as that, but some girls, yes, that did work for them. Yeah, I guess, I guess, and you know, and again, each, to each his own. And, yeah, and that's just my personal opinion about that. But yeah, again, like I said, I, I you know, I get why people would consider me to be, old be an man. old man. <laughs> I don't know. Shut your how old are you since Bradley is 39? I'm 40. <laughs> I'm 40 years old. <laughs> so you older than him? Yeah, I'm not here, man. Kind of shocking, huh? <laughs> well, no, because I'm 50. I'm uh, 11 years older than Alex. Yeah. Something about them older women, you know? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And as a matter of fact, I was not, a, well, I was married when I was going to art school. So when he peeped through that window, him and his little friends and was trying to scope out, you know, because the art school then was full of um, the other color. All right. Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't many of us. So when they was walking around the school and they saw another of their color in the class, they got excited. Like, it's another us of us in there. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but I was not into him when we first met because I was still married. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, uh, I wasn't feeling him at all. It was like, and he wasn't trying to talk to me because I told him, look, I'm married. I got three kids. I, and he was like, okay. I'm like, all right. <laughs> but all that changed. And here we are today, 19 years. <sighs> but we started out as co workers, and she wouldn't give me no time of day. Mm hmm. And look at y'all now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, what was your uh, family religion? Uh, what was your, was your family religious? And if so, what religion were you growing up? Um, so my family was religious, uh, pretty much, uh, well, I, I was more, more Baptist, but okay. I, <laughs> I, I grew up, um, uh, in my, my mom's church, uh, and then I also went to Corpus Christi, so that's all, <laughs> so got the church here in New Orleans, but I didn't go there as much as I did to my, my own church, so I had a bit of Baptist and, and uh, Catholic going on, Okay. Uh, but yeah, you know, mass, things like that. It was super boring to me, you know, you know, went through a little catechism. All yeah. that stuff, I didn't finish. But, you know, I didn't, on the Baptist side, I had, you know, Sunday school. I, I you know, I was singing in the church choir. So I was singing in the church choir since I was seven. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, it's, 
my mom was, you know, definitely, you know, very religious. My dad, not really. Um, I don't, I don't really, I think it, it was just kind of like a time spending thing uh-huh. that he wanted, you know, like he would, anytime I would, you know, we would go out and do things, you know, he would try to bring me here as much as possible. Um, and I, you know, I get to go different parts of the city and just do all kinds of things, and, you know, things like that. But, mm-hmm. you know, uh but yeah, like my, my mom, she took her, her her religion very seriously. Okay. So, but yeah. And, and me too, you know, I'm, I still consider myself Baptist. So, yeah, you because know, I was honestly, I'd look at that as being more of my upbringing. And, yeah. You know, just I haven't been to my old church, but as far as like my church home in a while, it's been you know a long time. Uh, my my pastor. He retired like a few years back. Like I always say, finally, because I'm like, when is he retired? Wow. But you know, he's like my grandmother's age. My mm. past is like 91. So oh wow. Um, it they they had they kind of had to make him you know retire because you know he was still doing he, sermons. Yeah, he was still doing not all the time. He would have a lot of you know guest speakers. And yeah, things like that, but you know. Eventually, he stops, but you know, he was a good pastor, too, so I mean, I can understand, but I yeah, gotta, gotta let it go. Yeah. After a while. <laughs> uh, so, okay, and Bradley? Uh, I grew up Catholic, uh, you know, uh, through and through, uh, but well, <laughs> um, and, and from what I've been told, my, my stepdad, my, you know, my dad, uh, he actually was... Uh, he grew up Baptist, mm. but actually converted to Catholicism for my mom. Mm. Uh, at, at least that's if, if, if I'm wrong, you know, mom and dad, if y'all listen and correct me. But uh, I think that's how that, that story goes. Uh, but yeah, I grew up uh, Catholic. Um, we were fairly religious. We went to church on Sundays and whatnot. Um, well, I, I guess I should say my parents were very religious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was always in getting trouble, not paying attention. Um but yeah, we uh, we grew up Catholic. Um, I personally, I'm not, I'm not very religious. I guess more spiritual, if you want to call it that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I I don't know. I've always been a kid. That I'm, I'm gonna question it with anything that you tell me. Yeah. I, you know whether I, whether I actually believe it or not, I'm gonna question it. And uh, the more I looked into just religion for religion's sake it's like okay so let me get this straight so most other religions believe in multiple gods Mm -hmm. um and sure yeah you know we got we got this one god is omnipotent blah blah blah, all that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. uh but for me i guess the defining moment for me was i remember when my my grandfather passed, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, amazing man. My grandfather, he could cook anything, he could fix anything, he could build anything. And this, that's you know, that, that was that was my partner, that was my my best friend. Mm-hmm. And, and this was your grand, your mom's dad. Yes, correct. Okay. And um, <clears throat> uh, he he. I'm not really quite sure exactly what was the cause of, of his death. You know, mm-hmm. no one, he was already fairly old. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, he was maybe in his 80s, okay. uh, so to speak. And uh, he had emphysema, so, you know, it had that. Uh, I think at the time that he passed, he had a quarter capacity of one lung. Oh, wow. So um, he had it bad. Right. You know, uh, actually, my mom told me that he passed when he passed he had a smile on his face uh um, wow you know I, that maybe that was something she just told me maybe that's what it was i don't know i you know, really wasn't, wasn't there but yeah how were you when he died that, oh i would i think i was maybe sixth grade it's a sixth grade somewhere it's around there okay but i remember the thing that, that just kind of really stuck out to me was that you know and again this is just me in my own head if you have this this being, this omnipotent being that's all knowing, all seeing. He knows everything that was, is, mm-hmm. and will be. Right? Then why don't he stop things from happening? Because people and, have free will. Right, and and, and then to, to that to that aspect, 
if you have free will, but he already knows what you are doing, that's that's not free will. If he knows what you're going to do, yeah. Then, but know, so, so that, you that's have the right. Of, you have the right to choose to do better. You have true. the right to do whatever you want to do. But, and, and, and I wholeheartedly agree with that. The thing that confuses me is that regardless of what I'm going to do, he already knows what I'm going to do. Yeah. So if I'm going to do some craziness, he already knows that. Yeah. So am I actually choosing that? I mean, sure, may, I, maybe I am choosing that. But if he already knows that, then, you know, like, you can't stop me if you don't want me to do that. But no, because then you'd be a puppet. Okay. Uh, you know, sure. Yeah. Yeah. If he was controlling you, you'd be a puppet, right? Right. Correct. He doesn't so, want puppets. He wants you to love him and, and obey him and choose to follow him on your own will. And 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 then it I, I, I take, you know, and, and, and that's the thing, I even understand that. But then the, the thought then creeps in my mind is that, okay, so he just allows chaos then. Pretty much. And that and, and for me at least that that's why I have a problem with that. Because it's, you know, sure I'll I will i will devote my life to you, da 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 da. But if you going if you're not gonna stop this man from doing this thing to this little baby, I you know, I, I kinda got a problem with that. But you asking him to do it on your time. It don't work no, like I, that. I even on my time for, for whoever that's, that's, that's being affected by that. No, but you know? in your time, again, if if God, God, yeah, he could, he could control everything and stop all the evil from happening, but he don't want that. He wants to see how well you can be obedient and do what's right. Not for just him, but for your own sake. Right? Yeah. And, 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 and again, like I said, I, and, and, and so as a kid, I, I, and, and this is why I brought up my, my grandfather. Uh, I mean, his his life, you know, they really need to, you know, I don't know, maybe I might make a movie about it. But, mm -hmm. So he was, you know, born in the early 1900s. Mm -hmm. uh, they think at least, like, you know, around like 1908. And again, this is my grandfather. Yeah. And the reason they think that is because at that point in time, you really didn't, you know, like, well, first off, black people really couldn't just go to just any hospital. Yeah. Uh, and the coroner actually would go around and, and just record the new births. Mm -hmm. Well, they also didn't go around like clockwork every so, you know, they might the just coroner? Years here and there. Yeah. The and person that, that handles the dead bodies. During that time, yeah, it was, it was the coroner. Uh, and so when they finally came around to where my grandfather was, they recorded it and they just wrote down just whatever year it happened to be. So, okay, cool, fine. Uh, so then he eventually grew up and he, he had he had some sons and uh, uh, their mom passed. I, 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 I forgot from what. Uh, so he's a single father. He has these two boys and uh, he actually ended up having a uh, an agreement with like a local orphanage mm -hmm. that they would house his sons while he go to work. And uh, as as the story goes, he was a cook on the, on one of the barges that that ran up and down the Mississippi for mm. Exxon, if I'm not mistaken. Oh wow! And while he was being a cook, you know, he he taught himself or went to school to learn, you know, how to weld, how to be a mechanic, carpentry, like mm -hmm. all kinds of different stuff, and uh, ended up you know, working in the plant uh, for Exxon. Well, he then eventually met my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they got together, you know, and then she was kind of tasked, you know, with, you know, the, and then, you know, of course, it's back in the day. So, yeah. you know, how, back then. Uh, so he went to work and she's taking care of the household. And whatnot. they had a whole slew of other kids. Mm -hmm. I believe my mom is the youngest one, um, you know, and, and he was, you know, just, just an amazing father to all of the kids, even his grandkids. Um, he's even the reason that I even have any interest whatsoever in cooking. Wow. Uh, you know, so he, and, and that's that's a large part of, of my identity. Mm -hmm. You know, not that I'm, well, I, I guess at a point in time I was a professional chef, but 
you know, that that's, he instilled all those things into me. And, you know, again, like I said, as, as a kid, it, it was, and, and, and truth be told, this may honestly be why I was a loner as a kid, because I kind of had these questions of, you know, mortality. So yeah. Young. Yeah. But, you know, in, in, in my mind, it's, you know, I, I get everything that y'all saying that, you know, I, I get everything about, you know, because, again, I, I, when I say I went to Catholic, I mean, from daycare all the way up, actually, uh, I was, until college, I was always in Catholic schools. Wow. You know, so it was in, it was in my head, you know, all day, every day, and yeah. still going to church on Sundays, you know. Yeah. So listening to that, but then seeing, you know, not saying that the Bible isn't real life, but but to see the, you know, everyday real life, it's like, you know, like, how, like, how could this be? You know, and then as I got older, you know, I started, you know, learning about, uh, sure, yeah, you know, the Bible was, was written and all this other kind of stuff, but then you, yeah, again, and, and this is just me, right? This is just mm. me. You know, I learned that, sure, yeah, the different books of the Bible, you know, the book of John really wasn't written by John. Mm-hmm. The book of Matthew wasn't written by Matthew. And, and, you know, all these other different things. And, of course, the thing that popped in my mind is, Okay, well, if one of the main characters of the Bible is Jesus, where his book at? <laughs> where, where is Joseph's book? Where is Mary? I mean, Mary, like you got pregnant by God? Come on, you ain't you right nothing down. <laughs> you know, like, I had never God, thought of that. But know, I guess he was so busy. Said, God got me pregnant. Well, say what now? You who? <laughs> you, <laughs> who is this God? <laughs> <laughs> You know, so it's, it's, and and I'm, I'm I'm not that I'm a history buff, but I, I do like uh, to learn about uh, world history, especially like ancient or, or older yeah. civilizations. And, yeah. And during that time, knowing what we know about that era, you know, if Mary came to Joseph saying that she's pregnant, but then Joseph know it ain't his, mm-hmm. you know, during that time, you know, any other woman would have been stoned to death. Well, you know, he had. He had said he would just put her away. Yeah. Because okay. they were already engaged. Right. Yeah, and when so he it, found out she was pregnant, he said that he would just put her away and not that way it, she he would save her and keep her from being stoned to death. Right, right. You know, so it, it's 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 a lot of, you know, it's, it's it's a lot of those different things and and so that that that's uh, I, I kinda always struggled with religion growing up and so I, I decided that okay so instead of me trying to specify um and, and not even necessarily you know a, a particular set of rules to follow because my thing is you know i, I guess that's my, a lot of people they attach religion to to how they live their lives and truth be told it really ain't that that, that difficult yeah you know you know, it, to, to be a good person ain't that hard. Nope. You know, it's, 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 it's really not. Your heart has you know, to be so, right. You know, so if, if you just do the basic good stuff, yeah. for the most part, you're cool. Yeah. You know, and so that was kind of my thing is that, okay, and that's 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 universal across all religions, mm-hmm. regardless of what you, what you believe in. So my thing was that, okay, instead of me subscribing to this one particular religion, I'll take a part I'll take a part of something that's a part of all religions is a, is the spiritual aspect of it. Yeah. You know, and so I, that's kind of what I more gravitate towards now in my adult life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I cuz I when I, I guess as a young adult I was like, "Oh, no, I'm an atheist." You know, but I, there there were still certain aspects of spirituality that I subscribe to. So yeah. I, I can't necessarily say that anymore. Um you, you know, were an atheist at one point. At least I thought I was. How can you? How can you live in this world and say that you're an atheist? You don't believe in a higher believe a higher being that created everything that is. And I, I say that because I, I tend to have a scientific mind about certain things. Mm-hmm. Don't tell me you believe in the Big Bang theory. Absolutely, absolutely, without a doubt, hundred percent. Um, reasons being is, you know, again, 
those things, e- e- even if it's in theory, uh, we can see certain things like that happen throughout the universe. We can actually, you know, we can see it. We can see stars colliding. We can see stars yeah. collapsing. We can see the aftermath of those types of things. Yeah. And so for me, you know, and again, I understand that, that that's where the faith parts of it, you know, that that comes in, you know, where you have to have faith that that those things happen in mm-hmm. the way that, that are described. And, and again, that that's fine. That, yeah. that, that's understandable. Uh, for me, though, it's, it's hard to have unwavering faith in something that can't necessarily be proven. And, and I know a lot of people have different, you know, reservations about that kind of stuff, but, you know, it, and I will, now I will say this, I, I would believe in intelligent design. I think that maybe the universe itself is God, mm-hmm. right? I'll, I'll, I'll subscribe to that, right? Because at the very least, you know, you kind of have to make way for evolution. We can actually see that. Like, we can we can literally see how different things adapt to environments, yes. which in and of itself is yes. evolution. You know, so it's, it's kind of hard for me to subscribe to the idea of at least the Catholic creation story that, you know, within what six days everything was created to be how it is now Mm -hmm. i I would rather subscribe to the idea that okay maybe god is the universe so the big bang was just the catalyst to everything to be developed you know because again like i said he allows chaos right yeah well truth be told that's what the big bang was it was this big giant explosion that kind of just was a catalyst for everything Mm mm-hmm so I, I kind of take a little bit of, of both, really, is that, okay, so, because I, I look at, you know, human anatomy. Our mm-hmm. bodies are so ridiculously complex that, mm-hmm. you know, it had to be designed in a particular way. Had I to be. That, and he's right? the and master designer. Right. So my thing is that, okay, what, what then is the catalyst of change? You have to be put in an environment that you're not really equipped for, and you have to adapt to it. Right. So say people would just say something as simple as people walking on two legs at some point in time. Maybe we didn't walk on two legs. What's the purpose of us being able to walk on two legs? We had to have adapted to something. Right. Even technology. Right. We've got, you know, technology that that's, an, you know, uh, an evolutionary type of thing. Yeah. You know, 50 years ago, we didn't not only did we not have computers, but we kind of didn't have a need for them. No. Nope. You know. So now, not only do we have them, but we actually do need them. So that's more of an evolutionary thing. Yeah. So I, I can understand, you know, how how we got here. Mm-hmm. You know, and again, like I said, my thing is I, I, I would more subscribe to the intelligent design mm-hmm. um, idea. Yeah. More so than, you know, the Catholic version of God. Because in another sense, right, who's to say that, you know, the Hindu version of God is wrong. Or who's to say that, you know, the, I don't know, that that whatever other religion, you know, of of God or gods, because yeah. a lot of people have several different gods, who's to say that, that they are wrong? Truth be told, as, as, it, as it pertains to just religion, Catholicism is actually fairly young. Yeah, you know, and I think it's a very young religion. all religions have bits and pieces, and I believe... Everybody at some point was just like, well, I don't agree. And they went off and started their own religion. And that's how all religions started. But is there one particular religion in general that's the religion? I don't believe that. I believe it's kingdom. We're kingdom. I don't believe in re- religion. is man-made. I believe... Oh, in kingdom we all serve one lord we don't have to pray go to no priest and and confess our sins to a man we have access to god on our own right and i, I do believe that and so to, to that aspect um you know and, and look I, 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 hope, I hope the people ain't listening but uh, <laughs> i hope they are <laughs> you know, I, I, I do understand that the Vatican controls a lot 
of different things with that. Yeah. You know, and, and of course, you know, of course, now you get into the conspiracy theories. Oh, they got books that they don't want to apply. Oh, they edit this, this, and that. Yeah. Sure, fine. But at the very least, you have to recognize that. Okay, so if, if, if I if I were to believe in in the Bible, the you know Roman Catholic Bible. Okay, mm-hmm. let's say I believe in that. Well, the Bible was written what twenty five hundred years ago. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, it wasn't written in English. <laughs> no, nope. it's know? a lot that's uh, been lost in translation. And right, so that's my thing is that okay, so not only were the books not written by who they were named after. It was written in a dead language who literally have words and letters that just has no English translation. Yeah. So now we have to use the next best thing for that. Yeah. We'll even look at the how English words have changed meaning, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say, let's go back to, say, I don't know, maybe 1940s. If somebody were to say, I'm gay, right? That quite literally meant I'm happy. I'm happy. Right? Now, now gay I'm means sad. something totally different. Right. And that that's that's within, you know, I don't know what the past hundred years. Yeah. So talk about twenty five, two thousand five hundred years, right? Yeah. You know, that's that that's that's a tremendous amount lost in translation. Yeah. You know, so it, it's you know, and if, okay, play what what's the game you used to play back in back in, you know, elementary school, you whisper something to somebody ear and they go around the room and it get back to you but it's something completely Some totally different. different. Right. Like that is not what this person said. Right, exactly. You know, so that that's that's kind of that's kind of where I am, you know, with that. And and for me the the, the thing that that doesn't change mm-hmm. is the spirituality of it. Yeah. You know, right. So that's true. I, I, I do I do believe in, in the spiritual aspect of certain things. How far, you know, yeah. I'm not sure. Do I believe that a tree has a spirit? I I, I don't know. You know, I, mm-hmm. I don't know. But you know, I'm not a tree, so I, you know, I don't really care. Yeah. You know? So that that's that's kind of, I guess, how how I, I regard um, religion. I, you know, I didn't mean to go long, long, drawn out. About that's this, fine. But, like, uh, for me, it's, it's just you know, as long as you're a good, decent person, and most people know what decency is. Yeah. You know, not not saying that you have to have you know impeccable manners yep. and whatever and all that kind of stuff, but you know, if you ain't going out, you know. If you, don't, if you ain't cussing out your mom and your daddy, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, like it's, if you, you know, following it's the Ten Commandments, right. you good. And, and, you and on the point. The ain't there hard, though. Thou shalt not kill. Well, yeah. Duh. Yeah. Your you know, okay, duh. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Well, duh. But, you know, <laughs> the like, easy like, those, peasy. Those, <laughs> right. Like, those those things ain't hard to do. No. Like, you know, no. Just chill out, bro. Yeah, you know. I think God reads your heart. He knows what's on your mind and what's in your heart. Right. You know. So. so that's, I, I, and I don't know. Maybe that's why I would get in trouble with it when we was going to church because I, you know, I was daydreaming. I was thinking about some other stuff. You know, I, I didn't really want to be there. <laughs> and, you know, and, and, and of course they would tell you, you know, well, God knows your heart. Okay, well, if God knows my heart. Why am I here? <laughs> you know. Because. Like, sure. <laughs> you know what I'm thinking. Like, why well, I gotta be here? Because, you know? <laughs> because we don't always do what our mamas and daddies want us to do. Right. And, you know, but then that's the thing, right? If I'm not doing what mama told me to do, well, that's on how to discipline me. But you know? it says raise up the child in the way they should go. It don't say nothing right. about what the child want. It yeah, says you know, raise up the child. Do do. Yeah. You know, a kid ain't interested in going to church because as a kid, no, church, because the parents want you to go to church. And, uh, you know, y'all, like to Zon is an acolyte at our church, and she every every Sunday when she get up, do I have to go? To, yes, Mama. Yes, you have to go to church. You have to bring in the light of Christ because now we go to a Methodist church where she's an acolyte. So they bring in the light of Christ, light the candles in the in the pulpit, the pastor pray, and then they uh sit down and you know, after service he'll call him back up to bring the light back out but it's like yes ma'am you actually have a position <laughs> you have a job to do at church and you know and I, I, I have a, a a theory that isn't you know uh, very well accepted by most people mm-hmm. truth be told I think the bible is actually a children's story you know, again, you know, again, I say I know a lot of people look at it, but you know, that's a scary story. story for children. Well, exactly, right? Because if, okay, so you got a kid that don't want to listen, you gonna tell them a nice story? No, 
Yo, if you're a okay, a, a kid getting too close to the stove, what you tell them? Don't touch that stove, it's going to burn your hand. You know, you you you, you kind of impart just a little bit of shock and awe in them to, to get the message across. Yeah. You know, and, okay, I, 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 I was even, you know, talking to my wife about this, you know, and, and, and you got to put it all in, into perspective, mm. you know. I remember as a kid, <laughs> I always heard the good sometimes have to suffer for the bad. Yeah. And as an adult, you actually know that to be true. Yeah. Right? You've but learned of course, that. In the Bible, you know, Jesus got crucified because he's trying to impart religion to people. Yeah. The good had to suffer for the bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, so, you know, for, for me, it, 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 it does, truth be told, kind of read like, you know, uh, a children's story to, to teach them consequences. Yeah. To teach them you know, that sometimes things not going to be fair. Yeah. That, you know, you, you still got to get up. You still got to gotta keep pushing. You still got to go and do what you got to do. You know, even if somebody on your back. Yeah. You know, and and, and I, I even, you know, looked at, you know, how, how Judas betrayed Jesus. Yeah. You know, and, you know, putting that into perspective, <clears throat> so Judas was paid 30 pieces of silver to betray Jesus, to go and kiss him on the cheek, mm -hmm. you know, and what well, that's that's the, the purest definition of temptation. To to put it into perspective, that was so much money back then he could have bought a slave. Yeah, you know he could go and buy a whole herd of you know that. I mean that's that was life changing money back then. Yeah. So to put it into today's perspective, if somebody came to you with some life changing money to to, to betray your homeboy, are you going to stand by your homeboy or are you going to go betray him? And you that's know, so just that, it. So, so we right back right. at square one. God right. give everybody free will. Right. So, so like I said, to me, it, it's, you know, it, imagine trying to teach a kid loyalty. Like, how, how do you get a, a young child to understand the, you know, the, the, the dynamics of loyalty? That you're going to stand strong regardless of anything. You know, because if you give a kid and say, hey, man, I'll give you a lifetime supply of ice cream if you tell me where your mama, you know, what, what the cold tea mama safe is. Yeah. Well, oh, you best believe that safe going to be empty. Yeah. that kid with that ice cream. Yeah. You know, so that that's. And again, I know that that may be a, a warped sense of, you know, perspective, but it's just. You know, to me, it, it, it does, it, it, it reads like a children. And I'm saying that it's bad, right? Because obviously, especially if you look at the state of the world today, some people miss their lessons. You know? Exactly. And, and I, I, I think that, not saying that, you know, every single child should be taught the Bible, but, you know, I think that everybody should at least read it. Because I will say it is, you know, whether people believe it or not, or whether it is true or not, it is a fantastic book to read. It is. I mean, it is, you know, it's full of drama. Yeah. I mean, From beginning to end. Crazy. <laughs> crazy. It got drama. Yes. Okay. All the way through. Right. You won't get bored. It's literally from the beginning to the end. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I think everybody should, should read it, at the very least, just to see what's in it. You know, if, if, you, if you can read Harry Potter, you can read the Bible. Yep. You know? Yeah. So, as, you know, I. And I said, I know it's not, it's not a very popular opinion. And I, and I get that. And I agree, you know, no, it's not very, you know, popular, but at the very least I've read it. Yeah. You've yeah, read the whole that. Bible? Uh, again, I went to Catholic school from daycare to 12th grade. <laughs> oh, but <laughs> y'all you know? have a different Bible though. It is. It yeah. Is the Roman, it is, you know, the, Roman Catholic, right? yeah, the King mm -hmm. James is, is a bit different than, than the Roman. Uh, yeah. The Roman Catholic, to me, at least send, tends to be a bit more dark. Mm -hmm. than yes. the King James. You know, the whole, <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's just a bit more dark, you know. Um, yeah. Because my dad know, was and, Catholic and I visited Catholic Church, but I just can't get into confessing my sins to a man. Right. When. Yeah, and, and right. So. So I, I even take that, right? So you have, you know, the, the Roman Catholic and you have Baptist, which the truth be told, the just subsets of the same religion, quite honestly. Yeah. But have wildly different practices. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that that's, for, for me, it, it's, you know, and, it, and and still talking about the same God. Mm-hmm. You know, still, you know, fairly similar stories, you know, but that that that's, that's where it, it gets it's difficult for me because yeah. it's like, okay, hold on. Like we have, you know, and of course we talk about Baptist and Catholic as if they're like completely different religions. Mm -hmm. They're really kind of a subset of the same one. Yeah. 
but the practices, the culture even of those two religions are wildly different. Yeah. It's, especially in the black community. Yeah. You know. So it's when when and when when you take an analytical mind to it, it you know, at least for me, it it just raises a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. So I then take the religion away from it, and then I just focus on the the spiritual side of it. Yeah. Because spirituality, you know, spiritually speaking, you know, whether Baptist or Catholic, it's the same. Mm, I'd have to disagree. Yeah? Yeah. How so? Because curiosity. the Catholics worship uh, Mary when Jesus is the Savior. Not, not necessarily. Um, even though they, they have a prayer, you know, to, you know, the Hail Mary and all that. Kind yes. Of stuff, Hail Mary, Blue Grace, you know, all that kind of. It, at least what I've been taught, you know, you know, so that it, it's more of of um, how can I explain? Um, it's not necessarily like a worship prayer, but it's more of a. Um, Kind of almost like giving thanks to giving birth to the Son of God, kind of a prayer. Okay, but we're not supposed to worship any any entity aside from God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. So right there, yeah, you give thanks for her giving birth. Women give birth every day. Right. Yes, hers was in an immaculate con- concep- conception. But right. okay, it is what it is. Right yeah. And and right, okay, so the other thing is if if I guess now if if you know we might be, you know, splitting hairs and talking semantics now, if that's the case, should we then be praying to Jesus who's the son of God? God and Jesus are the same. So how is he then the son? It's the Trinity, actually. God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit are three. Right. But if we can't worship anyone but God, Jesus was an extension of God. The Holy Spirit is also because, again, it's just one. Yes. Yes. So how could one be three? I don't know. You're going to have to wait and write that on your little paper. Right. So when you get to heaven, you be sure to ask that. <laughs> you, you know so it's, so it's, you know. it's a lot that I don't know and I can't explain. Right. I don't claim to be a Bible scholar. And it's just ever since I had my brain stroke, I've been on fire for the Lord right. ever since. Right. And this and, and, is my and, and, platform to give back, give thanks to help build God's kingdom for anybody who feels like they've done so much wrong that they can't get right with the Lord. So I bring, not only do I do my own shows, but I have Did You Knows and I bring my my um special guests on so they can share all the mishaps and mistakes and messes up, mess ups they've had in their lives that God has made into messages. And I allow you to share your messages on my platform. And, and then look, I'll, I'll even tell you this, to contradict myself, right? I, I do believe that things are put into place specifically for a reason. Chantel and I uh, started out as coworkers. Yeah. Right? But even going back further, had Hurricane Katrina never happened, mm-hmm. I would have never met her. Because we've crossed paths Several, yeah, because she told me she knew your brother. Her, your brother right. and her went to school together. Yeah, we, we, we've we crossed paths countless times. We were at the same track meets. Yeah. Uh, her school used to come to my school for their volleyball practices. I yeah. didn't meet her then. Uh, That's how I met Jeremy. Because she, he was in a gym while we was at their school practicing. Wow. She actually knew of me while she was in college at Southern University in Baton Rouge while I was in college at University of New Orleans here in New Orleans. Yeah, I forget about that. Wow. <laughs> you know, so we, we we grew up around the same people. Actually, a lot of the guys that was on her track team in high school, mm-hmm. I ran some track with. 
Wow. So I, I knew her friends, she knew my friends, you know, and uh, to take it a step, another step forward, my catechism teacher is her sister-in-law's mother. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so, right, so, so like I said, to contradict myself, right, somebody had to put something in place for all those things to line up. You think? You know, and again, the world has, what, 10 billion people? Mm-hmm. And out of 10 billion, she. Yes. And y'all, yo, you two are crisscrossing and, and paths don't meet until a certain moment in time. Think right. that's coincidence or guidance? It, 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 right. So... So, and, and, and like divinely said, ordered by God Himself, right? So, it's, so even 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 with me having the logical mind that I have to try to analyze it and all that, I can't explain that. Yep. You know, so and I, some I, things just not meant to be. Everything doesn't have right. an answer. You won't get right. an answer to everything on this side. Like I say, when we get to heaven. That's when you can ask God, well, why did this happen? Because me and Chantel right. had been, we knew the same people running the same groups and had never ran across each other until we started working at the same company. Why was that? And then you'll find out. But until right. then, just keep on living. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and I said that, you know, e even though I do have all the questions that I have, that still doesn't. Yeah, you going to wear I, God I, out, but. <laughs> <laughs> you go. Have, you have a whole pad. Like, hold on, let me. And when you flap out your sheet, it's gonna be like a roll, a scroll, to just keep on rolling. Like, I, I, I got <laughs> How much time you got? Right. <laughs> well, come on, let me. Let's keep on going because I know y'all got to cook dinner. Um. Okay. What got you tr in trouble the most as a child? Were you talkative or quiet? A liar or honest? Selfish or kind-hearted? Stubborn or easygoing, a bully or a nice kid, a lover or a hater, bossy or passive. Um, Your most dominant uh, trait, because I know some people will have more than a couple, but your oh, most yeah. dominant. I was, I was a very, I would say happy-go-lucky, but the thing that would get me in trouble is like I would want to do like you know what I looked up to like my brother and my my cousins and stuff like that. So I would do things like, okay, I'll watch horror movies I had no business watching at my like my young age. Or I was like, oh, my brother can jump off the roof or he can flip off the roof so I can do it too. Yep. Like that type of thing. And, you know, I, all of a sudden I'm breaking something. Yeah. A bone in my body. So that type of thing. Um, but I mean, overall, like I was, I wasn't a troublemaker. I was, you know, I was the kind hearted person. I yeah. Was, I'm not gonna lie to you, you because of the fact that you know everybody was maybe they kind of take a toll on me because you know I was a bit of a people pleaser. Yeah. So I still I still suffer with that. Yeah. And I say suffer because like I still try to make a point in like stopping that from happening. And, yeah. You know, take control. You learn from head. your mistakes. Like, it's like oh the automatic answer is not yes all the time. Exactly. Because <laughs> I've made I've I made that mistake. I was a people pleaser. And I would put my, whatever I had to do, I would put that on the back stake. If somebody asked me to do something else, I'd be like, okay, right. I'll come back and do whatever I got to do. I'll do this for them. And then right. when down the road, when I need them to do something for me, it wasn't reciprocated. And then I'd be upset when yeah. it was all, it was really my fault because I shouldn't have sacrificed my time to do for them when I had, no, I had other stuff I need to get done. Exactly. So. Like I'm putting myself on the side. Exactly. Line. So no yeah, more. Trying to make sure that person's getting exactly. Like, they're, not gonna, they're not gonna appreciate that. And you know, like even down inside, they're not gonna appreciate. Yeah. It. Like you're so prone and so accustomed to like just doing that. Mm -hmm. It's just yep. like a part of your nature now. Yep. So, How about yeah. you, Bradley? Uh, Were you talkative or quiet? A liar or honest? Selfish or kind-hearted? Stubborn or easygoing? A bully or a nice kid? A lover or a hater, bossy or passive? Um, I was definitely quiet. I never got, got in trouble for, you know, being loud or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I probably asked way too many questions. <laughs> 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 I probably asked way too many questions. Um, if anything... And Wait, then, uh, you can't say talkative and quiet? Um, 
Well, and truth be told, I'm actually not very talkative either. Um, very curious person. I'm very curious. Okay. I'm, I'm going to have to add that to the list. <laughs> I um curious in a sense. Okay, so I, I almost burned down the house, I don't know, three, four times. Oh, Lord. Uh, <laughs> not a fire starter. Uh, well, I mean, it wasn't like I was a firebug. It was just like, hey, my dad got a shed and he got all these different liquids in here. What if I put them in a can and light it on fire? What's going on? Wow. Happen? You know, or it's, I want some beignets. I ain't never really made them before. And we got, we got like solid Crisco. We ain't got no grease. Oh, my I'm God. So I'm going to just put it in the pan and see what happens. So I, I was kind of that kid, you know, oh, you know what? This fence is kind of close to the roof. I bet you I can climb on the roof from the fence. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, that, that was... Did that you was my, my ever break idea. any bones? Um, yes, actually, but it wasn't because of curiosity. Uh, really? I, I was a hurdler in high school. Uh, I was pretty damn good, too, mind you. Uh, he was. And this was, what, my senior year, I think it was? For indoor state. Um, well, I qualified for indoor state. I uh, yeah. had the fastest time in the whole state, all that kind of stuff. And it was the week of indoor state, and uh, it, it rained all week. And I, I really couldn't get any kind of practice in. And so the day of uh, indoor state, I. Uh, yeah, we had other shoes, so I figured let me go ahead and put some hurdles up and get some practice in. And, uh, you know, it was a little cold, so I had on some sweatpants and whatnot. Mm. And, I, you know, we're doing my run-throughs and all that kind of stuff. And I remember my dad was telling me, hey, you know, let's go ahead and hang it up. You know, like, you're going to be running a minute. And, and I don't know, maybe I guess it was my curiosity, because in my mind, it's like, no, I got to get one more. I mm. got to let me get one more. Well, I clipped the hurdle, fell, landed on my shoulder, and the impact uh, actually fractured my collarbone Ooh. in maybe two or three different places. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, so that was the first and only time that, that I broke a bone. Um, so I guess you could say it was, maybe it was a little bit of curiosity. Uh, but, no, all the other wild, crazy stuff, nope. Uh, jumping off the roof. Um, we even had a... a <laughs> We had a clubhouse that I, I, I built a zip line mm. for. Oh, wow. Never, never broke a bone with that. Um, jumping fences, riding a bike. You know, the never, Evil never Knievel. Did. Oh, yeah, very much so. I, I <laughs> used to build ramps, and, you know, of course, none of them worked. But, uh, but yeah, we, uh, we, we, we did all kind of stuff. Wow. It was wild. Uh, actually, I... <laughs> To, to to that effect, my mom and my dad called us uh, monkey boys growing up, just because it was it was just wild. Uh, oh, wow! And I, I, you know, granted, when you're a kid, you don't really understand the difference between a monkey and an ape or whatever. But yeah. you know, in my mind, a monkey was a chimp, and uh, I actually have uh, the face of a chimp uh, as a tattoo. Uh, you know, oh, really. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll forever be a monkey boy. It's, I mean, just because I'm an adult, don't mean that I'm not curious no more. It's Ooh. just I, I'm a bit more calculated with my curiosity. Yeah, you've gotten more educated in advance, right? You know, <laughs> I'm not gonna go jump off a roof. I'm exactly. You know. <sighs> All right. Yeah. Uh, what but was... no, as far as those uh, those other things, uh, I, I guess more passive than anything. Um, but I guess the, the the dominant trait for me would I guess would be curiosity. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, quiet, curious, talkative. Yeah. See, uh, okay, your curiosity led to your being talkative. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, and I, 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 I like to, you know, I, I guess that's like, I don't like small talk. If if I'm going to talk to someone. I, I would much rather be, you know, something of substance, something that, that we can actually talk about. Yeah. Um, you know, growing up, you know, I was, and then still am fairly quiet. And, you know, sometimes people, oh, why are you so quiet? Well, it's not that I'm quiet. It's just I don't have anything to say right now. Yeah. You know, the whatever the subject of the conversation is really just isn't that intriguing for yeah. me. So I'd, I'd rather just not say anything. Okay. So, uh, which of your parents were the disciplinarians in your household? Your mom, your dad, 
both or neither, like my cousin uh, Ty said in our interview earlier this year. Um, so, yes, my, my mom was most definitely the uh, disciplinarian. Uh, okay. my, my dad, I, I could tell, like, even at a young age, like, he didn't want to rock the boat. Like, I guess I was da- a daddy's girl, so mm-hmm. it was like I could never whoop her or whatever. But, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I didn't really get whoopings like that anyway. I even get punished. Like, I would see my brother get in trouble so much. I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that. So, <laughs> That was one of those, like, I'm watching him. So you yeah, had the I'm benefit of, of being the younger child and know what not to do to make mama mad or daddy mad. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so I, I learned a lot from just watching my brother and just watching my, my cousins just in general. I'm like, yeah, y'all stupid. Like... Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just not going to either do that or I'm going to find a way so where I'm not going to get in trouble <laughs> for doing that. Like, uh-uh. So it was <laughs> like either I'm going to like make you to where no one will ever like catch me. Yeah. But at the same time, I was like, I, I didn't want to deal with the stuff they were doing because I was like, that's stupid. Like I always looked at it as like, why? Yeah. So, but no, my mom was definitely, she was a disciplinary. She, she would, you know, like it's her big thing was like she wanted you to understand like why it's wrong, make sure that you understood why it was wrong, and make sure you never did it again. Most definitely, you you getting punished, so yeah. something's getting taken away, or you know she's she's gonna make sure that you feel it in some way, shape, or form as far as like making sure that you never do it again. Yeah. So, but yeah, she was definitely a lecturer. I'll tell you that. Sometimes oh, you be like, God. Mama, can I just have a whooping? <laughs> I don't want to hear you talk no more, but you know you you definitely get you get a whooping out of this world if you ask not, her to whoop you. <laughs> so it's like Ooh. at one point my, I'm gonna start daydreaming, and if it don't seem like I'm paying attention, yeah, that's something else. That's even worse. <laughs> so, Are you listening to me? Yeah. I'm like no, I'm. Yeah, my, my brain just turned off for like a hot second. <laughs> and you, Bradley? Oh, I just you. It's just, I'm bored now. Uh-uh. What about you, Bradley? Uh, my, well, a, a, a little bit of both, honestly. Uh, you know, if, if, if we was going to get, you know, I mean, of course, you know, now we talking back in the day, we, we still get whipped and whatnot. Right. Uh, you know, but yeah, my, my dad, yeah, if we needed to get whipped or whatever, it, it was you know, my dad. And, and Was you know, it your stepdad or your real dad? My, my stepdad, yeah. My, my, my real dad, he, you know, he, I don't know, that, that's, he oh, really that's was right. around to this. I mean, I'm not saying that he was a deadbeat, you yeah. know, but, you know, he, he lived in a whole other state. So, okay. You know, um, but yeah, no, if, if um, yeah, and, 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 you know. Like if we was fighting, if we was doing all kind of other stuff, yeah. you know. Um, my mom, you know, her, her she she was a lecturer, yeah, most definitely. Um, but yeah, mainly though, it it was my dad, you know, his and his thing was um, you were kind of more afraid of of his disappointment than anything. Yeah, not you wanting know? to let him down. Right, mm-hmm. because his his thing was always you know be courteous. You yeah. know, don't, don't, if, if you're going to do some dumb shit, you know, make sure that if, if, if you do that, it only affects you. If yeah. you do something stupid that affects somebody else, like, you know. Yeah. So that, that, that was, that was, that was kind of his main thing. That's good advice. Yeah. 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 Okay. And what was your favorite memory from childhood and why? Bradley? Oh, um... And it can only be one thing. It's almost eight o'clock. <laughs> right. That, that's, for me, I, I, I really had an amazing childhood. It, it would be hard to, to pinpoint just one thing. Uh, if I if I had to say anything, honestly, it would be uh, the time I spent growing up with my brothers. Um, every Saturday morning, uh, you know, we had our Saturday morning cartoons. It was X-Men and yeah. Transformers and all that. And, yeah. And I, I, I had the TV in my room, uh, so you know I'd, I'd kind of wake up in the morning, mom and daddy cooking breakfast. Mm-hmm. We got our Saturday morning cartoons, and you know after the cartoons went off, I would jump on my bike and ride through the neighborhood. Yeah, and go meet up with some 
friends and, you know, just go do dumb stuff. Yeah. As, you know, the, 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 basically the, the childhood that everybody wishes that, that they had nowadays that, that, that they miss. You know what I miss? Why they don't have Saturday morning cartoons on no more? I, I remember that was the thing. Everything's on demand now, so I mean, you can't, you kind of can make your own Saturday morning. I know, but it's, it's not the same. Cause no, it's, it's not, not the same. Know. That used, it used to be network TV. You ain't have to pay extra for it. You ain't right, even have to have cable for it. It wasn't even that, because you know, this is back in DC. If you didn't have a VCR and you missed it, then, then come Monday, you got to listen to everybody talk about the show, and you got to catch a rerun. Yeah, it comes on. Yeah. You know, so then it, 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 was, it, was, it was just different back then. It, you know, even, even it was a different day and time. Now, right, even if you got the new stuff now, even if they had some good cartoons, which which there are, because I yeah. still watch cartoons. But no, I do too. It's, 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 still, it's still not the same. No, you know, if you miss it, you can just go back and watch it later. But back then, if you didn't, because not everybody had a VCR. Yeah. You know, and if you just missed it, then come, you just going to have to listen, listen to everybody talk about it come Monday. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's I, I don't know, it's, it's, it's just, maybe it's just a, a different era, a different time. Yeah, it you is. Know, everything, everything is recorded. Everybody's always connected. Like, yeah. Because oh. it's like, I ain't get my first cell phone till I was in, in college at Art Same. Institute. Same, yeah. I, I'm now kids like, now have I'm cell phones. Sure. It's like, what? Who yes. had, I mean, my youngest daughter got her cell well. My oldest daughter got her cell phone when she was, I think she had graduated from high school. Oh, wow. Yeah. But she was, I had her in 87. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, but she got her first when she worked, uh, when she had started working after high school, she uh, was going to college and she had a little part-time job. And that's when she got her first cell phone. But yeah. for us to have kids now that are still in school, Zon's been having a cell phone since she was in oh, fifth grade? Dang. Well, yeah, I not think, a yeah. smart race. I think, was, I think that's when she got her too. Yeah. 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 And, and that was late for her. Because she have yeah. other other friends she was going to school with, they all had cell phones, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. why do y'all need cell phones? Who is picking y'all up? That's I mean, so weird for me. it's so weird. It's like everywhere you go, your parents are taking you. Why do you need a cell phone? <laughs> or if if it's an emergency, you call the school. Why are you going to call your child? Well, the, well, the thing that, that that made us cave was that um, Mila was telling her, was telling us about, this because like, kids don't really like hang out in person like how we used to do. They yeah. hang out on FaceTime. Yeah. You'll have like six kids on a FaceTime. Yeah. That, that's that's kind of how they hang out now. Yeah. That's and the new hang And really, kind of brought that to us. that's but, best though, because right. there are people stealing kids now. Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. So and then and that's it, and it's just kind of wild that even our kids have had different upbringings. So when Daisy was about Mila's age, uh, we were still in California. Yeah, and we lived in the military neighborhood. You know, he had his little bike game. They would just go out. So he kind of grew up kind of almost like a nineties kid. Yeah. Kind of, so we we really wasn't worried about him having a cell phone. Yeah. Uh, you know, we eventually did get him one because it's like, all right, well, if you can be gone all day long, I mm -hmm. feel like I need to be able to contact you. Yeah. You know. So we, we did, we got him one, uh, but it really wasn't like, you know, him just having one just to have one. It was him just like, you know, we can, you know, get in touch with him. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, but Mila, she was the one that brought it to our attention that it's like, she's, you know, she want to hang out with her friends, but, yep. you know, she's not going over to their house. They're not coming over here. But yeah. That's, that's the way they, that's the new way to hang out. Right, right. So, so we like, all right, okay, well, sure. And of course, and, and now these cell phone companies, they make it so much easier to just go ahead and get, oh, buy three, get one free. Exactly. Well, hey, well, that shit, okay, why why not? I mean, yeah. so, you know, that, that's, that's, that, that really might be the main reason that she got one, just because he was getting it for free, so like, why not? <laughs> but y'all still had a bill for it. Right. Right, yeah. True. You may have got the phone for free, but you still had the monthly charges. Right. Well, and, and even to 
that effect. So, and that, that, that's, I'm, I'm a, you know, some a veteran, so we can discount from everything. At the time, we had uh, T-Mobile, and it was... Uh, I miss T-Mobile. It was everything unlimited for, for, for half off. Yes. Like, oh, well, damn. Like, so we got four lines unlimited, everything, and we paid less than $100? Yeah. Right. Okay, sure. You know. So, you know, they, they just make it so easy to, to, to do all of that. I was with T-Mobile over 20 years. Oh, wow. I went through T T Mobile. I I went through three different. I, when I first joined them, it was a company that started with an A, and then it turned into another company. And T Mobile was the third company. Now we with AT and T. But I was enjoying my time with uh, T Mobile because I had been with them so long, so I get discounts. You know, discounts for longevity since I had been with them so long, but then they started giving, the time with them didn't mean anything else, didn't mean nothing. They was going after the 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 new customers and, and started uh, not giving the longevity discounts. So I was like, well, pooch y'all. I've been with y'all for too long for y'all. How y'all gonna cut out old people who've been with y'all for years? Trying to get new people to come over. Who new people ain't gonna be faithful? They gonna go to somebody else every every time they get an offer for somebody. To, if they go to another company, they get a free phone. Guess what? They going to get the free right. phone. Yep, exactly. Be gone. I think they're changing it up though. Well, really too late. I'm with. I'm. I'm. We moved on to T A T and T. Now we on a family plan. Plan. All three of us got phones through AT and T. Yeah. So, uh, what about your favorite memory from childhood, uh, Chantel? So, my favorite memory, because I had to think about it, I was like, all right, I got time to think about it. Um, it used to be like the, it's, you know, Saturdays, but we used to have like different types of Saturdays. Uh -huh. Of course, it was always the cartoons first, because, you know, even my mom liked, you know, some of the cartoons, like we would watch Gargoyles, Gargoyles, and, um, X-Men was, like, her favorite. Uh -huh. So, I was like, that's mine, too. So, let's, hey, all of us literally just watch uh, Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah, I love also, cartoons. Yeah. We also, we also have, like, cleanup days. But sometimes it would turn into, like, a dance-off type of thing before yeah. we can actually get started with cleaning up. So, my mom, uh, she had a lot of records. Mm -hmm. So, she would put a record, some records on. Um, most of the time, it was, you know... Like, we have Parliament, but, you know, all of my favorite stuff was Prince. Even though I like everything else, like Earth, Wind, and Fire and everything. Oh, but, my God. Uh, Prince is yeah. the best. Yes. Hands yeah. down. Well, hold up. I got I got to flex real quick. So, I saw Prince both times that he came to Essence Fest, which were the only times that he came to Essence Fest. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, I got to see him live twice. You know? Wow. Well, I have I one... Know. I have the first time I went to see Prince was with my uncle when I was in high school. Oh. And the next day I went to school tired, but bragging about I went to the Prince concert <laughs> with my uncle because uh, he had bought some tickets for him and a couple of friends to go and the friends had backed out. So he ended up taking me and uh, one of my other girlfriends. Uh, yeah. I don't ask for Oh my gosh. But no, yeah, we used to um, we used to do like a dance off, kind of like our own soul soul train uh -huh. type of thing on Saturday. So yeah. that's that's probably like the, my best thing because I remember uh, my mom she would just like like to watch us, so she would dance too. But you know, one day she pulled out the robot, and I was like, what? <laughs> like I had no idea she knew how to do the robot. She was so clean with it. I was like, my, I, you know, I was thinking to myself, okay, this is why my brother knows how to dance so well, because he learned from you. So it's like, all y'all teach me all this new stuff. So I'm like, all right, cool. But wow. Yeah, that was, that's probably the best part of my childhood. Um, wow. It was just, you know, listening to music and us just like, you know, just dancing together and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And she made clean up days fun. Like, it's just, I hate cleaning up. I still hate cleaning up. Today. Yep. But um, yeah, she made it fun because it would, she would put on music. Music would be blaring all throughout the house yep. all, the whole time. Take your mind right. off of what you're doing. 
Exactly. Yep. I still do to this day. Like, I don't have a blare in the house, but, like, I, I just put my AirPods in my ear and yeah. I just, you know, go It around. helps. I probably look crazy doing it, but I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Chantel, who was your best friend in elementary school? And are you still in contact? Um. So, starting off, my very first best friend in elementary school, it was, uh, it's, well, I'm trying to break it down in my brain, trying to make sure, but kindergarten. Mm-hmm. Jonathan uh, was my first best friend. Donna who? Uh, his name is Jonathan. Jonathan. Oh, okay. Jonathan. Yeah. Not a boy. Yeah. I told you. I, I was <laughs> a boy. It's so much easier. Like, I, <sighs> this was like that. Um, but yeah, like we, we were really, I think it was it, at the time, kindergarten so we would talk about wrestling a lot and wow that was like our biggest thing or whatever but you know like, what i looked at a lot of wrestling with my uh grandfather and i think some of my guy friends that's that was a point that we connected on yeah wrestling was like that was because it was a big thing when uh we were kids yeah so it wow. was big then i used to watch it a lot mainly because my cousin was watching it and, you know, I got into it because I was like, oh, okay, this is, this is not bad. You know, in my mind, I'm like, I know it's fake, but mm-hmm. it's entertaining. So yeah. it's like, okay, cool. Yeah. But, and then, you know, of course, um, I think we uh, kind of like faded pretty much like halfway or mostly through um, elementary school because I remember he got held back and then I switched schools. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm like Instagram friends with him, but like, I don't really talk to him. Like, I can't remember the last time I talked to him. Like, I, I know he has two kiddos. Uh, you know, it seems like he's doing well. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the other two girls I mentioned, uh, Cookie and Lindsay. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm friends with Cookie on Facebook. Uh, we don't really talk that, that much. Lindsay, I can't remember the last time I've seen Lindsay. Like, um, her, my mom and her mom fell out. So that was it. Okay. So y'all, <laughs> so, y'all friendship died right there. It, it died, <sighs> but honestly, it was dying anyway because the whole who stole my ring thing. Oh, those um, are the girls. Yeah. And no, it, it's, it's the thing about it, it was just like the lack of information. It's like, you know, like it wasn't like, oh, I, I didn't do it. Like, it wasn't that. It was just like, I'm going to stay quiet. It's like, give me something. Like, yep. So it was that, but it was kind of dying out. And I think I, through that happening is the reason why my mom and her mom fell out because I think it was like her, you know, defending her kid. But mm-hmm. I, to this day, I still don't know who did it. So, like, wow. Like, so that's the big that. mystery. Who <laughs> stole her ring? Huh? Who stole the ring on the camping trip? Right. I never got it back, so I have no idea. Wow. Yeah, and that was the last, I mean, that was not the last thing my, my dad gave me, but that was probably like my, the most favorite thing that he gave me. Wow. So, Girl, that know, ring meant, that, that's them broke that, up some relationships. That, that ring that meant that a lot. The world to me. Wow. <laughs> it was my birthstone. It was a gold ring. It was it was a plain Jane ring, but it was the fact that my dad gave it to me. And my June birthstone in it. And I wore it on my pinky. Wow. So, so yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh who was your No. What was your favorite junk food in middle school? Junk food. Bradley? My favorite junk food. Um, so we really didn't eat a whole lot of junk food in the house, honestly. Um, well, at least, at least I don't really consider it to be junk food. My mom and, and my, my grandpa, because she learned from him, uh, mm-hmm. they were bakers. Uh, mm-hmm. So she, made, she makes cakes. Um, and... You know, that's junk food. I mean, but is it though? Yes, cake is <laughs> junk food. <laughs> I mean, cake is just is just is one more ingredient away from pancakes, right? <laughs> and, 
So, no, you know, not one more ingredient. It's a lot more ingredients. Oh, you got some sugar, some flour. <laughs> you don't put sugar in pancakes. You don't put as as much sugar in pancakes as you do cake. Well, oh, you put syrup on pancakes though. Yeah, sugar. <laughs> Yeah, but no, yeah. So, so cake, I guess. Um, uh, I, I, every once in a while, I like to make some banana bread and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I, I really wasn't like big. Was you candy. baking then? As oh, a kid, yeah, I've been baking since I was like six. Oh wow! Oh yeah. I, I, well, again, I told you I didn't burn the house. I almost burned the house down three, four, five times. That, that's how you learn fire control. You know, you <laughs> get on that stove, you got you got to make that thing work. <laughs> Yeah, you know, tried to burn something. Trial and error. That's all. That's it. You know? Lord have yeah. mercy. So, uh, like I said, I really, you know, I, I, I guess I said I didn't really eat a lot of candy. Uh, but we, you know, we had, we always had cake in the house. You know, some muffins or something like that. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so that, that's that's you know. Uh, oh wait, I forgot to ask you, who was your best friend in elementary school? So if we if we specifically talking about elementary school, I, you know, again, my grandfather before he passed. Um, after that, I kind of had the the mindset of, you know, it's kind of pointless to make any other friends because they're just gonna leave. You know, I know that's <laughs> immature. You know, way I, that's it. not funny, but I mean, that's sad. But, uh, well, that, 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 that's kind of how I looked at it. For a little kid to have that thought. I mean, he was my best friend, and you know, he died, and you know, I kind of wow. Like, you know, nobody really sticks around forever, so it's so to keep from having my heart broke like that again. I just rather not have friends. Oh my God, Bradley, that's sad. I'm, I'm not saying it's not. You, know, <laughs> <laughs> you cast that's... off a whole human race for your grandfather. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I I would give anything to be able to talk to him now. I would give anything to be able to talk to my grandfather too, but I mean, you say he was your best friend, and since he died, you didn't want to make best any more friends. Well, in, in my mind, it's that you know, you know, they're gonna go anyway. So, <laughs> point, you know, so, did you know what emphysema was? Um. My mom, she explained it to me that it was, you know, it was, it was basically an illness that that's just not going to go away, and this is it was going to cause him problems until he died. But so, did you know what caused it? Oh yeah, um, he was a, he he was a fairly heavy smoker up until duh age, age forty. I'm uh, I'm, I'm and I'm almost positive none of the kids you were hanging with were smokers. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Well, again, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't know, maybe fifth or sixth grade. So it's just, in, 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 in my mind, it was just that, you know, all I knew is that this is my best friend. He's gone, you know, and it's not like he moved away or whatever. It's yeah. like, you know, like I can't even see him. I can't talk to him no more. And and that that really tore me up. It really did. Wow. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't want to have to go through that that hurt again. And uh, so I just, you know, I just kind of cast off everybody. It's like, well, you know, I'd, I'd rather be by myself. Okay, but I'm thinking, all right, I understand you were a child, a little child. But this is your little child thinking. Because your friends weren't smokers. But you say no. you were a loner. So you didn't yeah. have, he was your only friend. Uh, how I regard friendship, yes. Okay. Uh, Cause I, I I don't I don't really I don't I don't really have like acquaintances you know mm -hmm. like, you know sometimes it's like you know yeah you know I, I know them but you know I don't really know them like I, if for me how how I have friendships because again I I, I don't really and, and and maybe I should and I and I have been trying as of late uh, to kind of you know keep up with everybody but mm -hmm. you know for me because of how I am you know I might not talk to you you know for two three years mm -hmm. you know not not you know maliciously or anything like that it's just you know life just happens but, yeah you know my friends we pick up like there's no time lost yeah you know that's 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 to me you know that that's that's a friend i have very 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 few of those you know but 
every day I, as, as, a, as a kid, I kind of fell into that. And, and I guess that kind of also made me kind of pay attention to how people did things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when, when you see, you know, the kid jumping up on the, on the desk and it's, in the, in the classroom, dancing on the table to get people to laugh at him. It's like, you about to get your ass flipped. You know what? I'm hanging out with you. <laughs> you know, like, that, 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 was, that was me as a kid. You know, it's like... You so know, you was thinking like an old man your whole life, pretty much. Right, yeah. You, you see you see little Johnny over there. It's like, bro, you didn't pass. You didn't fail the last five <laughs> Like, you stupid, bro. Like, I, 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 I was thinking... Thinking, yeah, right, I, I, was you. I was thinking the same way as that. That's like, oh, nah. You know, so that, that's that was, and, and I guess I just kind of just, just you know, kept with that. Okay. Uh, you know, so like I said, if, if, if we're talking specifically about elementary school with my grandfather, now I will say, you know, I, I do have some really close friends that I've made, you know, in college and and, I, and especially in the military. No, this you is know. in elementary school. Right. We're yeah, gonna get to college. That, 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 that'd be my grandfather. Okay. Yeah. So what was your favorite, uh, I'm sorry that I had missed over that me and uh, Chantel got to talking about her friends and I forgot to ask you what your best friend, who your best friend was. So what's your favorite junk food, Chantel, in elementary, in middle school? Okay, so my household was was a household of cooking and baking as well. So, Mm -hmm. um, my, I found my vice outside the house. <laughs> what was so your I, vice? I, it's kind of like, it's so cliche, but whatever. I mean, around the time uh, when, you know, I guess it was hot. It was like the hot Cheetos. I like any like type of hot food. So oh, wow. Most definitely hot Cheetos. Flaming hot Cheetos. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> 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 and that's, that's the thing about it. Like as an adult, it's like, oh, you want some these? Like, nah, I'm good. Like, you no know, stomach aches. Yeah. Exactly. They will eat your stomach up. Yeah, I can't I stand. I, I used to could eat. Uh, oh, my favorite uh, food. It wasn't in in middle school. I think my favorite food was. Uh, Bunions and French fries. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot about Cool Ranch Doritos. That was that was my thing. Like Cool Ranch was the hot thing. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> cool Ranch Doritos. Okay, so yeah. what group were you a part of in high school? The potheads, the popular, the cheerleaders, the athletes, the nerds, the creatives the choir, the drama club, or even the potheads. And I had, I've only had one special guest that admitted to being a part of that last group, the potheads. And she's now the president of the Southwest Christian Writers Group. My lat, my, uh, I did an uh, interview with her back in, I think she was my August interview, Tina Myers. I was like, Tina, now she, I will interview, y'all need to check that out because <laughs> She was something else.